welcome to The Social Contract, a Commander podcast. I'm Mike Almond, and joining me is my co-host, Alex Lab. Alex, what's up, man? Not too much, Mike, and I'm excited because today we finally get to review Kamigawa Neon Dynasty yeah. and its uh, Commander decks. Now, there's got so much stuff. a lot <laughs> so to talk stuff. about here. Um, there's there's a few cards that I'm very excited to talk about, and a lot of cards mm-hmm. I'm not so excited to talk about, even though they are within our wheelhouse. And I think this will sure. kind of bear itself out as we talk about them. But um, a couple of the cycles that we talked about in our recent episode, where we reviewed uh, old Kamigawa, the mm-hmm. the block from uh, from several years past, and uh, those cycles really stood out to us back then. And they did bring a couple of those back, but yes, I think uh, quite a bit weaker and less interesting for me personally but i think we'll get into that more once we once we talk about them sure i I mean it's 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 a weird set but it's yeah it's it's a strange Uh, one yeah i love the flavor of uh like okay we're 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 bringing like full-fledged vehicles we're bringing like cyberpunk we're bringing spirits like we're bringing a whole lot of different concepts here and some of it's new some of it's new but reflavored yeah kind of thing um we'll talk about like you know oh the myojins are back and they're the same but they're different but they're the same and right. there's a there's a couple of cool concepts here uh the the flip sagas that's a neat concept flip sagas are in- interesting um yeah. a lot of them just flip into uh into normal french vanilla creatures right and it's like which is very know, standard I, yeah. I feel like that's for standard and draft I think so too, yeah. I, and and that makes sense because you know when you build a set that's supposed to be for everything, it can't. You know we've we've gotten a little uh, spoiled lately. Oh, I know. As far as like, know. the amount of commander stuff, so I get it. That's and, uh, that's another thing eh. that's that's relevant, and I think we'll have a lot to talk about in our in our judges corner. But one thing that we can talk about uh, right away is that some of these cards aren't just not designed for commander, but they really don't work with commander at all. Right. Yeah, no, there's there's quite a few uh, as far as the full set. And again, just to go over our set and how we go uh, with our reviews, we're looking more towards things that are for the social contract. That's so right. that is more interaction with the entire table. That's group hug, chaos, stacks, those kind of effects where it's it's about the table dynamic yeah. as opposed to just raw, raw power we're of the card. talking stuff or, like rattlesnakes. Board yeah. wipe, spot removal, controlling yeah. the board, making deals, all the good stuff. You know what our podcast is about. You've heard yes. us before. I think you've heard us before. If not, welcome. That's what we talk Hi. about. Yeah. So it, it's it's not this necessarily is not a full set review. Be, yeah, and yeah. it's not going to just necessarily be the biggest, most powerful yeah. things in there. Though I think we're going to talk about what I think is the most powerful card. Just in incidentally, this set. because it is in our wheelhouse. Is that the case? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, 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 it yeah. Kind of, um, okay. but I'll tell you what. You mentioned the the you know the judges corner, and I think I like starting with that whenever we're looking at a set review. Okay, because, hey, here are the effects. Here are the new rules. Here are the returning rules that maybe people aren't all that familiar with. So, Alex, as our resident judge here, what's going on? Like, what are some of the mechanics and things that we have to pay attention to with? The new Kamigawa set. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. So there are a lot of interesting and new things happening in this set. Um, one of the ones that you mentioned is transforming double face sagas, which mm-hmm. uh, don't really require a lot of explanation, right? You play them, they're a permanent, and then they'll instruct you on when to transform them. They work like any other transforming double face card. Um, you can't cast them as their backside. You don't have that choice. You have to transform them through a uh, either an instruction or effect on the card or another effect that allows you to transform a permanent. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we also have a new keyword, which is modified. And that one's yeah. also, uh, that's, it's new, but it's kind of like historic. If, if you remember from uh, Dominaria, historic mm-hmm. wasn't a new concept. It was just a new keyword. Historic, I believe was auras, uh, or it was artifacts and legendary creatures and, uh, yeah. and sagas. And now we have modified, which is any permanent that is uh, enchanted with an aura, uh, equipped with an equipment, or has some kind of counter on it, like a plus one, plus one counter, or an indestructible counter. 
Um, so if a creature is modified, that just means that one of those three things are enchanting it. Now, uh, this is a, a point of contention that may not be immediately clear because I don't think they uh, spell this out quite clearly enough, but uh, a creature is only modified if an aura that you control is enchanting that creature and equipment that you control is attached to it, right? If it's an opponent's aura okay. that's cursing your creature, it's not modified. Okay. All right. That that makes sense because we're going to have some questions about that. Yeah, we'll soon. we'll talk about all this stuff. The next thing we have, Mike, is reconfigure, and this is truly a novel keyword. This is going to be a lot like bestow, if you remember from uh, mm-hmm. uh, previous Theros sets. But instead of being an aura sometimes and a creature sometimes, now it's an equipment sometimes and a creature sometimes. So let's yeah. read the reminder text for reconfigure. Uh, reconfigure is a keyword that'll have a cost after it, and that means that if you pay that cost, you'll attach that permanent to a target creature you control or unattach from that creature, which is different from equip. You normally you can't pay an equip cost to unattach. You can only attach it to other things. Um, you do this at sorcery speed, and most importantly, when this uh, permanent is attached to another permanent to a creature, that isn't a creature anymore, right? Because mm-hmm. if something is a creature, it can't be attached to another permanent. That's just, okay. that's a rule about equipment. So if your equipment becomes animated or it is a creature, it just falls right off because that just doesn't work in this game, right? Okay. And uh, as a point of that, I know that uh, some people have been asking, there are some effects in this game that give... Uh, I believe there was a there's a commander from one of the brawl sets that gives creatures a equip ability um, or something to that effect, or gives or gives equipment equip ability. I'll, I'll have to pull that one up. But if okay. a card with reconfigure gains the ability to equip itself with an equip ability to another mm-hmm. card, um, that will still work, right? You will still be able to equip it to another creature and it will stop being a creature when it's equipped okay so we have a couple of cards that that give this ability we have pure steel paladin which has the metalcraft ability that equipment you control have equipped zero as long as you control three or more artifacts and uh, then we have sir gwyn here of ashvale which is an old commander that uh, says equipment you control have equipped knight zero right so these are equip abilities that can be granted to equipment right you can okay. use these abilities on creatures that have reconfigure. That has been confirmed as allowed. Now, we don't have the rules, so I can't quote to you exactly how it's going to function. But we know sure. that reconfigure intrinsically has, as part of its ability, is a static ability that says when this uh, permanent becomes attached to another permanent, it stops being a creature. So that just functions. They've just decided to make that work, Mike. Um, okay. So selfishly for my art and death. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the, the Scryfall text for it is still at the beginning of combat on your turn. You may attach any number of auras and equipment you control to target permanent or player. Mm-hmm. Even if these reconfigure permanents are out and they're out as creatures, can I attach them to something no, as an equipment? No, I don't believe equipment? you can. I think it would have to be attached to something as an equipment and then you could do that. Because okay. as it stands, you can't simply attach... A creature to uh, to something else without right. without having that keyword ability reconfigure or equip, but it's got that. It, but and that's why I was trying to. Con- yeah, I was kind of confused with it because it's an artifact creature equipment, whatever the creature. Is. Right. So I was like, okay, does that mean that I can attach it because it's an equipment? Right. The problem is that it, doesn't care? it is an equipment and it's always an equipment, but mm-hmm. it's also a creature and creatures can't be attached. Now I realize this is a very unsatisfactory answer. When the release notes come out. Um, I'd mm-hmm. like to to go over it again and, and make it much more clear and robust. I'm just sure. going by what the rules manager has informed us. And mm-hmm. uh, and to that, my knowledge is that equip abilities that have been added will work, but simply trying to attach this uh, creature version of the equipment without stopping it from being a creature is not going to work. Fair enough. All I right. mean, worst case scenario, that just means that we're going to be adding something to the beginning of the episode in the near future. No big Absolutely. Deal. Uh, we have a couple more things. This one is, uh, is quite interesting. Uh, one of the commander decks for Neon Dynasty Commander has uh, a problem, Mike, an interesting problem. Yeah. It isn't 
a legal commander deck because yeah, of a misprint. I saw, I saw you post this. Yeah. This is really curious. Um, so this is actually going to print. This isn't like some of these other errors where it's an error on the preview image or it's an error in you know testing, but they'll have it ready by production. This is actually going to print. Mm -hmm. When you pick up one of these Kamigawa decks, it's going to have uh, two copies of, I believe it's a uh, Marshwater Flats at, or Mosswater Bridge. It, I, I forget exactly mm -hmm. which one it is. It's going to have two copies of a non-basic land. And uh, obviously in Commander, you can't do that. Um, so, yeah, that ain't okay. Yeah, recommended. Uh, check your deck when you buy a, a Neon Dynasty Kamigawa Commander deck. Make sure that it only has one copy of each non-basic land. And uh, if it does have more than one copy, even though it came that way in the box, it's not legal. You might just want to swap that out for another card or even a basic. That's okay. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's a real problem, right, Mike? Because not everybody is going to hear about this. And right. uh, probably they might even be shuffling their deck before they even look at it. And I imagine that people who are just enjoying a casual game at the kitchen table will not even maybe even notice that they have a second copy of that card in their deck. So I just think that's a real issue. And uh, and hopefully we just get as many ears on this as we can. Uh, this deck needs to be changed before you can play it. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, hopefully no one makes a huge deal of it regardless. But it is something to keep in mind. Right. And also, again, everybody, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Uh, po Body is nerfed, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, that is kind of... A uh, fairly large oversight. Uh, it is something that's kind of your, you know, it, this isn't like a, uh, you know, mom and pop shop kind of thing. Exactly. It's literally, hey, this is our commander product. Uh, here's our commander product for this set, and uh, made a whoopsie. Not, not, not legal. Indeed. But it is what it is. We have um, one last one, and then, and then I will allow us to go to the actual set review. Sure. This is no, your punishment for asking about. for judges' corner at the start of the episode, Mike. Absolutely. Um, Vehicles are back, right? Yeah, we all know vehicles. Vroom, vroom. They are artifacts that can be turned into creatures by paying their crew cost. I think we all mm -hmm. pretty much understand how that works. You can tap down creatures you control to pay for this crew cost, and once you've paid that crew cost, uh, that artifact will become an artifact creature, and it has its power and toughness printed on the card, so you know what it is. And maybe it has additional abilities when it's uh, when it's crewed. But this is a, a very edge case role, and I think a lot of people didn't know about this one. Um, prior to the release of this set, if your vehicle became animated without being crewed, uh, for example, if you had like an animate artifact style effect and you animated your your uh, vehicle, then you could, I don't know why you would, but you used to be able to tap down your animated vehicle to crew itself. Uh, mm -hmm. But that is not the case anymore. There will be a new rule that will say that vehicles, uh, if they're animated, cannot crew themselves. It will need to tap down other creatures you control. Makes sense. Very strange. Kind can't, of an edge can't case. Power the car with the car. I yeah, guess exactly. Kind of a thing, but you know, I, I, I sure. Yeah, it, it, it's like you said, kind of that edge case, but it's all right. It's at least it's now more definitive. I don't, I don't know. I guess so. Um, anyway, so that's a lot of stuff. If you have any questions about any of the rules or any of the cards or interactions for Comic Con Neon Dynasty or any other card, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, we'll have uh, all this contact information at the end as well, but on Twitter, I'm uh, Labramedic. And uh, Mike, let's get into the set review. Yeah, let's. You know what? I want to. I want to start with something cool. Let's start with dragons. Dragon. Sure. Uh, how about Ow? Uh, Ow. Ow. I think Ow. Ow. The Dawn Sky. Three white, white, five mana for a five four legendary creature dragon spirit. The dragon spirits. They be back. And uh, yeah, they, like you said, maybe not as powerful uh, as we were, you know, previously. Not quite as used powerful to, as you say. <laughs> but uh, still pretty good. Uh, so it's Flying Vigilance for a 5 4. Uh, when Al the Dawn uh, Sky dies, choose one. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put any number of non land permanent cards with total mana value four or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay. Good. That's, that could be some pretty good value. 
Uh, or yeah. put two plus one plus one counters on each permanent you control that's a creature or a vehicle. That's pretty solid. Like, it, it's not overpowering, yeah. but five mana for a five four flying vigilance that can pump the squad or get you some value. Okay, I dig it. Right. I think that some of our listeners might be wondering, why are we talking about this card? This doesn't seem like the car kind of card. Well, this is part of a cycle of uh, legendary dragon spirits of mm -hmm. the sky. And we had uh, a cycle of this, uh, of these dragon sky spirits in the previous Kanagawa set. And uh, they were really brutal. Most of them, when they yes. died, some really bad things happened. Um, and here, even though it's not necessarily things that are as bad happening, uh, this is still what I would consider to be a rattlesnake. If the board gets wiped, yeah. if this gets spot removed, you can instant speed sack it. You can make things happen immediately or threaten to make things happen. And that's why we're talking about this. Even though the effects are not necessarily social, not necessarily group hug, anything like that, Mike. They're still on there. They're still on there as an effect that, hey, this is on the battlefield. Right. This is a warning. So you're still creating more interaction in the game, even if it's not just a, oh, well, I'm going to play this card to stop that card. Right. It's another puzzle piece to kind of, you know, make the game a little bit more interactive, even if it's, you know, off the board and having to talk about things and think them through. Mm -hmm. um, something that's a little bit more, uh, well, directly interactive, uh, Banishing Slash uh, white, white, so two mana for a sorcery, destroy up to one target artifact, enchantment, or tap creature. Then if you control an artifact and an enchantment, create a 2-2 two, two white samurai creature token with vigilance. Uh, okay. It's not bad. So, <laughs> no, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's sorcery speed, admittedly. It is. Okay. Unfortunate. But destroy a tapped artifact, creature, or enchantment. And if you have an artifact and enchantment, make a token. Well, let's, careful. Tapped creature sorry, or an artifact or an enchantment. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So a tapped creature or artifact or enchantment. Right. All right. So, I mean, it gives you, you can get some value out of a, I mean, heck, there are not in commander that you would actually run, but there are plenty spells where, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to create a 2-2 two -two token. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's, you, there's plenty of spells that yeah. exist like that. This is definitely the on the, you can get a value. Definitely Ooh. on the weaker, more budget side. I think this is going to remain right. a, a very accessible piece of spot removal. And mm -hmm. I think the interesting thing about it is that not only does it threaten a spot removal on a variety of permanents, which white typically is not doing. White is typically targeting either a creature or an artifact or enchantment. It's typically right. not going to be able to get all three with one spell. That's more like mm -hmm. a green and blue and blacks wheelhouse. Um, right. Permanent and also, destruction. Right. Permanent. Right. Exactly. Also, if you have that artifact and enchantment, and I think a lot of white decks uh, tend to have that a natural theme, either they are running mm -hmm. enchantments because they're an enchantress deck, or they're running artifacts because white likes equipment, or uh, they're running one or the other, and then they need those uh, those artifacts as mana rocks to, to ramp mm -hmm. out. So I think it's not actually that uncommon that you would control an artifact and an enchantment, and then if you do, you're actually card neutral because you get a free token. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm glad this, I, it is actually good to me that this is sorcery speed instead of instant, because if it's instant speed, this is just better disenchant, you know, like this is just a, okay, great. I'm going to destroy an artifact or an enchantment or a tapped creature now. And yeah. you know, it's commander. So it's not necessarily as combat heavy as you're going to find in most other formats, but people still tap their creatures. Still, there's still combat. There's still abilities. I agree. I don't know if I would go so far to say I'm glad it's not an instant because I believe that white should have access to the most powerful spot removal. But you're right. If it were instant, it would be much, much more powerful because now yeah. not only can you threaten to destroy things instantly, but also you can instantly create a blocker. Right. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty slick. I like it. Um, let's talk about something that could be potentially pretty powerful. Uh, can't. The word can't. Um, Cloudsteel Kirin, uh, two and a white for a three, two artifact creature equipment Kirin, but the artifact creature equipments, it's, it's going to be a mouthful every time. Yeah. Uh, so this is a three, two with flying equipped creature has flying and you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Mm -hmm. Also with reconfigure five, uh, reminder, 
5 generic mana, attached to target creature you control, or unattached from a creature, reconfigure only as a sorcery, while attached, this isn't a creature. So, okay, this, this is, this, the, can't is very powerful, and can't lose the game, and opponents can't win, pretty good. Yeah, Mike, this is an interesting one, right, because mm-hmm. it has a very, very, very powerful effect on it, it has the Platinum Angel effect, right? Yep. You can't lose the game. That's by any means other than by uh, outside the game methods such as forfeiting or being uh, awarded a game loss by a judge or some other way like that. You can't lose the game through any normal method by decking, by your life total becoming zero or less, um, 10 poison counters, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And your opponents can't win the game even by effects that say they win the game. They still won't. So very powerful powerful effect we all know and appreciate that however right this is seven generic and a white to get this up and running now you can spread that across two turns if you like that is quite expensive Mm -hmm. still also this doesn't afford the equipped creature any removal protection so it's very vulnerable right especially for seven and a white i think that for that reason this if it does see play will see play in uh, equipment voltron decks Right, because yep. you want the creature and the equipments to already be well fortified, and then you can put this on top, and all of a sudden, your Voltron commander is now the star of the show, right? If they don't deal with it, they can't even play the game. They can't win. Yeah. No, it's 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 excellent. Like, it's... it's I like really, really good in a niche. I Those are kind of the cards right. I like because I like finding ways to use weird cards. This is a eight-mana all in all ability and creature to have a really difficult obstacle for your opponents to overcome. I like Voltron decks. I think they're silly. Nothing makes me happier than this card being on an assault suit and just saying, all right, let's let's do some some weird stuff here. Exactly. Because it says the equipped creature has it. Yes. So it goes somewhere else. Great. I like I think this card is is silly in a fun way and you know i i like more word i like more cards that say can't because that is just another weird stipulation to put on things um can't is very powerful. why don't you oh for sure yeah. uh why don't you talk to me about our next card here? i am very excited to talk about this yeah. card mike and i think we all are excited to see it farewell for what white that's six mana for a sorcery you ready for mm-hmm. this one Choose one or more, exile all artifacts or creatures or enchantments or graveyards or any combination of the four. Mike, this is austere command crossed with merciless eviction crossed with, I mean, oh my God, like, what do you even, what do you even call this thing? This is probably... The most powerful whiteboard wipe since Austere Command. I mean, this is so, this is so versatile. It's so strong. Talk to me. Oh yeah, uh, it's 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 very good. There's no targeting. It's exile. There's exile not all things that protect against exile. And it, you can exile artifacts, creatures, enchantments, exile. or graveyards. Yeah. Right. It can't hit planeswalkers. It can't hit people's hands. Yep. And it is going to hit your stuff. However, this is. I mean, you can do a lot of work with this you you give up some of that flexibility right from austere command because austere command has oh, yeah. that other option to either hit creatures mana value three or less or four or greater so you can either protect your tokens or big boys but in this case for example if you're playing an enchantment heavy deck you could hit artifacts creatures and graveyards bada bing uh, everyone else gets hosed and you get to keep most of your board so what what's up with this card mike uh it's really good like we can we can cover any number of ways to talk about how awesome it is and it's highly playable it's just very good uh my favorite thing about it i was on magic twitter and one of the things that was pointed out was this was going to be like one of it was going to be a card where the spanish version like the spanish translation of it was going to be higher value than every other kind because the card is called adios and that's really fun to me Right. I love the idea of like farewell is good, but I would much rather cast adios and just literally say adios to everything. Uh-huh. That's this is this is a cool card. It's a powerful card, and I like that. 
You know, yeah. it's it's when we're talking about white having access to more powerful spot removal. Well, this is this no, is this is a wrap. This is not spot removal. Yeah, th- no, I was gonna say on the other end. Then we have yeah. the rats and the board wipes, and yikes! That's the thing with uh, with white. A lot of the new and exciting board wipes we've been getting from white for these past few sets over these past couple of years, they haven't mm-hmm. been these high end mana value, high impact ones. They've been sure. destroy yeah. all creatures, and then they've been either super. Uh, low cost as low as three or even two mana which is great Mm -hmm. but they they don't have this versatility and then alternatively we've seen it uh the versatility but we see it on the land and then it costs way more this is austere command really set the the precedent for me austere command is the quintessential whiteboard wipe it has to go in your white deck it allows you to re-sculpt the board as you see fit and control your own board state and keep that in check. Farewell does that same thing. At the same cost, in mono white, you give up some things, you get some other things. Exile is very strong. You're stopping people from getting access to their graveyards. Even if you don't choose the exile all graveyards option, you're still protecting uh, yourself from other people by stopping them from putting their permanents into the graveyard. It's very good. Uh, sometimes you don't want to say farewell, though. You want to invoke justice, and that is a one white, 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 white. So this is this is not. Reminds me of another card. A lot of five color uh, decks. This band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> About that. Uh, well, this isn't banned yet. Um, so for a sorcery, return target permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then distribute four plus one plus one counters among any number of creatures and or vehicles target player controls. Yeah, that's an interesting I, angle. It, yeah. it says target player. It doesn't say any number of target creatures or vehicles, right? And that's that's so curious to me, right? Because it seems to me that most of the time you cast this card, obviously you're getting uh, your permanent card to the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Super powerful effect. Reanimating from the graveyard to the field is something that white can do at these higher mana values. Five mana with four white pips. Um, but then you'll choose a target player. You choose yourself or you choose an opponent. And I think that this is just a really interesting restriction, right? Because you can give these four plus one plus one counters. You can put them on your opponent's creatures. You can put them on your own. It's it's almost like you could make a deal. You could have sort of a mitigation. Like, listen, I'm going to bring back this really scary thing. I'm also going to go ahead and give you these four one one counters. Please don't remove it. Uh, I mean, there's yeah. there's ways to play this. It's high cost. It's slow. And... I'm not really sure of its viability, but it definitely like it. It, it has <laughs> it has that curiosity for me. Yeah, and that's fair. Like it, it's 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 worth it's worth mentioning. It's worth talking because about because yeah. it's it's different, right? Right. But it's sorcery speed, even so. So speed. all of the viability for what we would we would want to use it. You know, the maximum upside here. Yeah. Of, oh, well, I'm going to get something back, and. Maybe yeah. I'm going to be able to make a deal. I'm going to block the creature. Around. I'm going to pump Whatever, your creature up right? for combat. Yeah, yeah, but it's but it's sorcery speed, sorcery speed. and it's four white pips. So I mean, it's I don't know. I'd like it. It's interesting as a thought experiment. I don't think I really. like I don't think I'm going to be running it. That's all right because we got plenty of cards here to talk about still, uh, including a new cycle. Um, so why don't you talk to me about the marches? Yeah, the march cycle is an interesting cycle. We've seen this kind of effect before, um, and this is implemented in uh, in an interesting way, right? We've got March of Otherworldly Light first, and that's X and mm-hmm. White for an instant. Uh, as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may exile any number of white cards from your hand. This spell costs two less to cast for each card exiled this way. Now, again, we've seen this kind of effect before. Uh, For example, Force of Will allows you to cast it for free if you exile a blue card from your hand. And there are many Mm -hmm. other uh, cards that have similar effects. Where I believe they're called pitch spells, where you can either reduce their cost or cast them for free when you pitch a card to the yard like this. Uh, And then the effect says, exile target artifact, creature, or enchantment with mana value X or less. Now, this is very interesting because it's not always the case that the big juicy target that you need to remove is high mana value. Now, if it is, sure. this is not very attractive to cast. If you're trying to remove something that's CMC really? 8, 
if you're trying to move something that's CMC eight, I don't want to be pitching four cards to it or pitching two and spending five or right. any combination of that. Now, if it's removing someone's uh, stacks piece or mana rock or something like that, CMC zero, one or two, you pitch mm-hmm. a single card and cast this for free. I think that's a lot more attractive to me, but it's less versatile. That's just See, me. Though. My thing that I like the most about this is is how versatile it is. Mm-hmm. This is exile target non you know again artifact creature or enchantment. Yeah. And being able to like hey I'm going to supplement some of the cost here by pitching some cards from my hand. Yeah, the problem is right that once you get into those mid and higher uh costs this becomes very inefficient. Right? I don't want to be in- inefficiency. Yeah. Yes. But adaptable to the table and being able to assess whatever the threat Mm -hmm. you know this is something where like yeah if if i'm about to get killed by an aether aether flux reservoir i would rather have a disenchant than this spell well if you're about to get killed by an aether flux reservoir then i think it's probably too late because once you uh, spot remove it if they have the life to pay then they're going to activate it in response okay well now we're talking about you know my point is threat assessment when we're when we're talking about oh this is definitely the threat, yeah. Great, I have this specific card to take care of that threat. If there's a couple of different threats, if there's an artifact, if there's a creature, if there's a couple of different things, you can still try and work around with the table as far as okay, who can get rid of this threat? Who can get rid of this threat? And you have the you have again the least efficient version of it, but I like adaptability. And maybe this isn't a card that I'm running in a ton of decks, but I do like the idea of, hey, I've, I've got some decks that play a lot of white that put a lot of cards in hand because I'm playing group hugs, so I'm putting a lot of cards in everybody's hand. So if I've got 12 cards, I'm not worried about this nearly as mm-hmm. much. But I do see where you're coming from as that. The like, cards need to be it's white. great value low. And you're but, exiling mm-hmm. them, which means you never get them back. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is great. When I'm hitting someone's mana crypts and not pitching anything and paying one mana for it, awesome. But if I'm trying to hit someone's Bloodstone Colossus, uh, I'm going to empty my hand trying to do that or empty my mana pool. Either way, um, I think we we just don't see eye to eye on this one. I like the concept. I think it's a really interesting one. And there's a whole cycle of these, and I think that on some of the other ones, we'll have some other things to say about them. Oh, certainly, uh, which is fine because I'm actually very excited to move on to the next one because it's another uh, returning theme. Uh, Myojins are back. Yes, they are. Which is good because that means I get to do my Atraxa all weird counters deck. <laughs> and uh, they're not going to be uh, divinity counters, but they're still going to be pretty interesting. Uh, Myojin of the Blooming of Blooming Dawn, five generic white, white, white for a four, six legendary creature spirit. Myojin of Blooming Dawn enters the battlefield with an indestructible counter on it if you cast it from your hand. Remove an indestructible counter from Myojin of Blooming Dawn. Create a 1-1 colorless spirit creature token for each permanent you control. Yeah, you want to talk about win more. This is win more right here. It, I, the all better the Myojins you're... are win more. <laughs> you have to cast them from your hand and they do something cool. Mm-hmm. But... Oof, yeah, we got fun. two problems here. The first is the win more, right? You need to have a nice, healthy board, lots of lands, other kinds of permanents on the board, and then you get a bunch of mm-hmm. tokens. Awesome. Love that. If you don't have a bunch of stuff and you're trying to cast this uh, eight mana spell from your hand, hard casting it, mm-hmm. and you're not going to get a lot of value off it in that case, um, I would definitely want more than eight tokens for eight mana if I'm casting an eight mana spell. Um now you're right. There are counter shenanigans, and I love that idea. I love that you can uh, proliferate this indestructible right. counter. Uh, it's not going to give it double indestructible, but it will allow you to remove those counters uh, one by one and get as many tokens as you have uh, permanence. And the really <laughs> messed up thing about that, Mike, is that of course each time you activate it and make all those tokens, those tokens uh-huh. are permanents you control. So the next time you activate uh-huh. it, you will get effectively double that many it it, it it it's dumb yeah and i understand that's very niche win win synergy, more but that's part of why i like yeah. it um but here's the thing i i think i think honestly we're going to disagree a little bit here too um eight mana for a four six indestructible 
that you can turn into a 4-6 and 8-1-1 tokens whenever. At lowest, at, you know, at, at lowest. I'm okay with that. You know, because I think our game is so built on ramp and put stuff out there and you know if we're talking about ramp then eight is not the minimum right because mana rocks can generate mana too right exactly and you know maybe you know maybe i'm if we're talking like optimistic oh i'm gonna get this on turn six because i'm ramping and i've got my rocks etc etc yeah uh but you know i i like the idea of this like when we talk about rattlesnakes the idea of having an indestructible instant speed makes stuff happen mm -hmm. that's really cool i i like i like this i like the myogens um i think i don't know that this is my favorite one but i think this could do the silliest version of stuff minus uh what the blue one does right. which we'll get to that in a bit i think this is a very poor rattlesnake right because if okay. you're trying to rattlesnake which you would right because you leave this on the board anytime you want instant speed remove the indestructible counter boom you make the tokens that mm -hmm. works in some circumstances. For example, if someone decides that they want to swing into you with everything they have and you don't have mm -hmm. any blockers, well, now you do. That's great. Uh, what if they're board wiping and you don't want them to do that? Well, you can't exactly threaten them with this, can you? Because when, Absolutely when they board can. wipe, they're going to remove most of your permanents, uh -huh. except for maybe this one, if it has indestructible. And then... Yes you get way less value off of it than before the board was wiped. If you let somebody board wipe, all you have ensured is you're still going to have a four or six indestructible and you're going to be able to repopulate your board with one one tokens mm -hmm. for every permanent you control. Unless they're exiling. Unless, Mike, they're using or, an exile they're board everything. wipe, which are becoming more popular now. Great. And, and in that one case, this or the sacrifice board wipe, which we just saw. If if we have to do a sacrifice board wipe where everybody is sacrificing a bunch of stuff, or the like, minus X minus X board wipes that we love so much, again, if people have to do that to do all of these things, that means that people have to play the best versions and have them at the exact right moment for this to go bad. Which is why I don't see it as a win more card. I see it as a you better have the best answer, not an answer. But I think I'm also defending the Myogens just because I like Right. Them. That's the other problem with them, Mike, is the original Myogens had this clause, enters the battlefield with a counter on it if you cast it from your hand. That made sense in 2004, because in 2004, nobody knew what Commander was, except for a very yep. small number of people who were playing it together. It certainly wasn't very widespread, and it certainly wasn't a published product yet. Today, we have back. this game called Commander. Ever heard of it? Yeah. And in this game of Commander, we cast our commanders typically from the command zone. If you were to do that oh, with sure. this card, it is not going to get an indestructible counter. So you're going to have to yeah. do some serious shenanigans, either putting it in the yard and reanimating it, getting it into your hand with command beacon, uh, turning it into a god, and then putting an indestructible counter on that god with that one land. It's not a deck that works simply. You're jumping through a lot of hoops to get, in my opinion, what is a win more card that you have to hard cast. Mike, I don't like it. No, that's fair. We can disagree. Um, let's move on to our next one here, because we are 40 minutes in, and we're almost done with white. Almost. Sorry. We're we're almost, we're almost we're just over halfway done with white. white White's actually got... White got a few cards. Uh, organic Extinction. Uh, eight generic, white, white, so that is 10 mana for a sorcery, but it does have improvise. So your artifacts can help you cast this spell. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one. So you can tap artifacts, pay for one. Cool. Destroy all non-artifact creatures. There you go. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it, again, it's, 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 that, it's that thing that I'm normally looking for, where it's a card that is, you know, niche. Because you're not going to want to pay, you're not going to want to play this. Yeah, I think unless you're playing a, a you know a lot of artifact creatures exactly. specifically, um, which is fine. But I don't know. It, it's it's all right. I, I I I don't know when I would. What would I? What would I have to cast this spell for? For me to be comfortable with it, like you know. See, that's is, the funny this, thing, Mike, because I see this card yeah. and I see nothing but raw upside. Right, because one of my favorite board wipes in the game, Hour of Reckoning, four and triple white, seven mana for a sorcery with Convoke. 
Convoke says your creatures help you cat, uh, cast a spell. It's just like Improvise, except it's for creatures instead of artifacts. And Hour of Reckoning right. says destroy all non-token creatures. This is very similar. It's eight white white, and it has Improvise, destroy all non-artifact creatures. Right. So we like to talk about Winmore. I certainly like to talk about it. But mm -hmm. Winmore, this is more about protecting a good board than augmenting a board that's already good and winning even more, right? Because when you have a decent sized board with some artifact creatures on it, the concept of a board wipe is probably not very good for you right now, especially if you have the most committed to the board or you have a lot of sure. anything committed to the board. Having an asymmetric board wipe that has the potential of costing as few as two mana, but can cost anywhere along the spectrum from two to 10, that is almost certainly going to hit everyone except you. There are very, very few people who are going to have more than one or two, at most, artifact creatures that are going to live through this. And sure. presumably, if this is in your deck, there's probably not a single non-artifact creature that you're running. Uh, this is a very niche board wipe. It goes into your artifact creature deck, and when it's in there, it pops right the hell off, Mike. Okay. I mean, again, it, it's requiring a decent amount of artifact creatures yes. for for me to consider it. And even then, no, it's I, it's I, only I, artifacts I, that you need to reduce the cost, not artifact I, creatures. I understand, but for me to care about destroying all non-artifact creatures, I would have to be running a metric ton. Yes, of artifact it's called an artifact creatures. creature deck, and that's fine. I just I don't know. I I I get that it can be one sided, but if you're in a point where you're trying to destroy, if you're trying to wipe the board, yeah. But you want to keep your artifact creatures, yeah. I I don't know if I'm dealing with a if I'm dealing with a token deck, I I'm totally fine with blowing up the board because I'm making more tokens and I'm able to repopulate more. Uh, if I'm worried about you know protecting my blight steel, sure, I get that, but. I don't know. I thought the whole point about artifacts is that they're easier to bring back than just a traditional creature or anything else. I don't see what that has to do with the effect. It doesn't destroy artifact creatures. I, I'm i saying as far as bring. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's talk to our next one because I think we're both going to agree that this is cool. Um, I like Swift reconfiguration a lot. Yeah. Uh, this is just a one white, so one mana enchantment aura with flash, enchant creature or vehicle. Enchanted permanent is a vehicle artifact with crew five and loses all other card types. Yeah. We've That's seen we've seen cards like this. <laughs> These seem almost tailor made for locking down a commander, right? This is instant yep. speed, it's one mana, and uh, not all commanders are going to get hosed by this, but any commander that no. cares about attacking, blocking, or being a creature, which several commanders do, um, mm -hmm. wow, I mean, you're basically getting this enormous upside. You're spending one. They had to spend all of their men on their commander, and now they have to spend another uh, five worth of crew to take care of that, which right. they might not even have. Yeah. The, the ability to flash speed yeah. okay you've done all this stuff to set up for the thing that you want to do with this creature well have you also set up the ability to tap five power probably not exactly that's really cool yeah. i i, I kind of like that as a and i'm also a big fan of the like, hey we still want to do low mana cost cards that stop something terrible from happening but we don't want to make another path to exile or what or, right. or swords the plowshares. Okay, fine. I think this, this is, isn't exiling anything, but oof, it's almost it, not it, even it in really the same hinders. category as, as something like dark steel mutation, even though they feel very similar because dark steel mutation mm -hmm. is actually locking it down, right? It's removing yes. the abilities of the card. This doesn't remove abilities. It only stops it from attacking and blocking being a creature. Right. Which, which I'm fine with, you know, I don't, I, it doesn't have to, Again, just, oh, it's decimating. It's really inconvenient. This is and, very inconvenient, yeah. And there are times where it can be decimating. If like if you're playing against a Voltron deck, I, they better have another creature that they can start pumping up mm -hmm. or, you know, have a, like, 
That or a there's a uh, lot of ways that just whoop. Or a tribal deck, right? <laughs> if your commander yeah. loses its tribe, its creature subtype, uh, that mm-hmm. can really host some plans. Oh yeah! Holy cow! I didn't even think about that. That's really good. Uh, why don't you talk to me about the next one? Because yeah. this is where we get into those flip enchantments. Yeah, this is really interesting. This is one of Our these transforming sagas. double-faced mm-hmm. cards that's a saga on one side and uh, a different kind of permanent on the other. The Fall of Lord Conda is two and a white for an enchantment saga. Uh, the first chapter says, Exile, target creature and opponent controls with mana value four or greater. Um, and that one will trigger uh, immediately. Once you play the spell, once it resolves... Uh, it's going to get a lore counter right away, and you're going to exile something. So this isn't one of those do-nothing sagas that kind of slowly ramps up. This is three mana, mm-hmm. exile target creature and opponent controls at sorcery speed. Not bad. Right. Next nope. up, chapter two, each player gains control of all permanents they own. Uh, this is a classic group hug effect, right? Not only mm-hmm. are you stopping anybody who has stolen anything from you using a mind control effect, a threaten effect, a treason effect... Uh, you've got your uh, mob rule, any any effects that have stolen creatures in any way, everyone gets them all back. And I think that's a very egalitarian. It's a nice thing to have. I like to run Homeward Path. That card's getting a bit expensive these days. I think this mm-hmm. is just a good effect to have on a permanent. And then let's talk about chapter three. It says, exile this saga and return it to the battlefield transformed under your control. Let's look at the backside. Fragment of Conda is a white enchantment creature human noble with defender. When Fragment of Conda dies, draw a card. That's a 1-3. Yeah, so we talked about this, or at least I talked about this, Mike. The backside of most of these sagas is really uninteresting to me. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, I'm I'm kind of interested in the front side. I, I don't mind that at all, especially it's an uncommon. This card's going to be extremely accessible. Right now it's 34 cents. The set hasn't come out yet. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think? I, It's not bad. I'm a little underwhelmed. I really wish uh, the backside did something. Well, even my my real issue is that it's it's a three mana effect to exile a uh, target creature and opponent controls mana value four or greater, then gain control of all permanents. You know, everybody gain controls all all the permanents that they own. Mm-hmm. I I don't I don't think that's something like if you're playing in a game where people are stealing stuff, great. This is good. And it can be. You're absolutely right. The upside, the best thing that you can do with this card, as far as I'm concerned, is the first thing. And hoping that you can get to the next thing, you know, where everybody gains control of all permanents right. they own. Well, the uh, the interesting just, thing is... But that's that is, the problem with sagas, right? right? Sagas are difficult in, in EDH, right? Because like a Planeswalker, they have to remain on the table for multiple turns to get their full effect. And if you mm-hmm. don't get their full effect because someone spot removes them and there's many opportunities for that to happen, you feel like you didn't get your money's worth. Right. I don't mind it because it's not it's not crazy over over costed or anything. And yeah, for an if, uncommon three yeah, men is not that was bad to flip. If this was to flip and it nets you a card eventually, you know, it's fine. Sure. But I, I, I'm not excited about it. Well, but it's not bad. When I see this effect, right, on Chapter 2, each player gains control of all permanents they own, my mind immediately goes to my humble defectors, my perplexing chimeras. These are cards mm-hmm. that have this social aspect where I give them away, and they become sure. a lot more powerful when I just remand them back to my control. Which that I get. That that I understand. And I, I, I didn't think of that synergy, and I do like that. Um Oh, yeah, it's 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 okay. I don't think I'm gonna put it in any of my decks. Probably but, not. You know, maybe maybe I make a saga deck one day. Um, what I don't have currently is a planeswalker deck, uh, but this is a pretty fun one yeah. as far as I'm concerned. So why don't you talk to me about the wandering emperor? Okay. Here? Yeah, this is the wandering emperor, uh, two white white legendary planeswalker, no subtypes because this is the wanderer, and the wanderer does not have a planeswalker subtype. Uh, yep. She is a mystery to all. Now, she starts with three loyalty, and she has a couple of static abilities. She has flash. You can cast her as though she were an instant. And uh-huh. as though the one, uh, excuse me, as long as the Wandering Emperor entered the battlefield this turn, you may activate her loyalty abilities any time you could cast an instant. Now, this is something that we previously only saw on Teferi's Ultimate, which is a yes. very, very powerful planeswalker. Now, you only get to do this once, once every time she ETBs. Uh, however, 
you have three immediate options, and then she remains on the field after that. So let's look at those three loyalty abilities. And again, she starts with three. The first one is a plus one. Put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature. It gains first strike until end of turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't play this on, on my flash. If I'm playing her at instant speed, this isn't the one I'm choosing. But this is a nice plus one uh, ability. It's not bad. Um, we'll get back to that. Yeah, I think this is interesting because it's uh, since you can play her at flash, this can act like a combat trick um, if you needed to. It's it's a pretty minor effect yep. to me. Let's look at your minus one. It says create a 2-2 two, two white samurai creature token with vigilance. Not that either. You can do an instant speed nope. uh, block or something like that. What I really like is her minus two. Exile target tapped creature oh, and sure. you gain two life. Um, having that ability to instant speed and then she's not dead and you can use her mm-hmm. abilities on your next turn. I really like that. I'm imagining a scenario, right, where I'm playing this on my opponent's end step. I'm minus twoing her. I'm exiling a tapped creature. Then it's my turn. Now I get to activate another one of her abilities right away. Exactly. Exactly. And I like that plus one ability a little bit more than you do, just just because I I think I'm more I think I'm more combat centered on some stuff. Okay. And and the idea of put a, putting a plus one counter on an up to one target creature, giving it first strike, that can save somebody. It can. That's what I mean by combat trick. Their, you can give yeah. someone else a trick. Right. Yeah. And and I kind of dig that just because the idea of like, oh, hey, you know what? I actually need that to stick around because if that sticks around on their turn, they're going to be able to kill them right back. And that's pretty good for me because I need them to go away. Right. I, I, like, I like the versatility on this. And, you know... I four mana is fair. Like I'm, I'm right. actually pretty happy with that. Uh, if if it's a four mana exile target tapped creature, and sticks around, and even after that, it just makes you a two two samurai. Right. Okay. I'm fine. Well, with we that. need to talk about this, Mike, because when this planeswalker is paired with an instant speed flicker ability, she oh, really yeah. turns into something very threatening. Sure. Because now. Every single time she gets flickered and ETBs again, she has her three loyalty counters because those don't require mm-hmm. the card to be cast. You can use any one of her abilities, flicker her again, and then use another ability immediately. Yep. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I like it. It 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 makes it makes my brain want to get creative with it. And I mean that's that's something in and of itself. Uh why don't we move on to our last uh, white card here, Alex? Talk to me about touch. The I spend spirit. a full hour just talking about white. Touch yeah. the spirit realm. <laughs> Two and a white. It's an enchantment. When touch the spirit realm enters the battlefield, exile up to one target artifact or a creature until touch the spirit realm leaves the battlefield. So yeah, this is an O ring effect, Mike. Um, mm-hmm. This is, we talked about O-Ring effects recently. Uh, we know there are two kinds. There's the kind with two triggers that can be exploited by stacking the triggers. And then there's the kind with uh, one trigger, and that's this kind. This is the much more fair kind. There's no shenanigans you can do with this. However, we do have upside. Uh, we have the channel ability, which says that uh, you can pay one and white and discard touch the realm, spirit realm from your hand. Uh, you can use this ability, exile target artifact or creature, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Now, this is very interesting, right? Because this is an instant speed effect and it's modal, right? You can either use this as an O-ring or you can use this as a two mana instant speed blink on any of your artifacts or creatures or an opponent's, for example, to save them from spot removal or a board wipe. Very powerful. Yeah, or or to get rid of a blocker, or, or right. It, the the beginning of the next end step is yes, always a fun because that saves you from the board wipe or the spot removal. Right. It doesn't come back immediately. All that good stuff. Lots of protect, lots of get through, all the nice things. And it's an uncommon. Um, this will be cheap. Yeah, I, I'm I again decent versatility. Uh, regular, you know, cost for an O ring or essentially, it's not a blink because it's 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 going to take a little bit. Um, I think we it's not people out. tend to call it's, it a blink when it comes back eventually, and a flicker imme- when it comes back yeah. immediately. Okay, I'll take that. Yeah, so it's a it's a O ring or blink. Sure. All right. Cool. I'm down. Now, that. channel. We're going to see on some later cards, especially near the end of the episode, where we're going to get mm-hmm. very excited about some of these channel cards, Mike. Yep. Yep. We're 
again, it's a weird set, but I like it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, white overall, it got some interesting stuff. At the it very did. least, it got good. It got it got some good cards. And it got some interesting cards. It got some stuff. okay cards. You know it got I mean? some interesting cards. And yeah. Well, we talk about Farewell. And then, farewell you know, is... you and I, Oof. you, it's very, very good. And then you and I might disagree on a couple of cards, but we each at least valued some yeah, of them. There's nothing here so, that's strictly unplayable. For sure. Yeah. And and that's, I frankly, I think that's that's kind of what you're asking for. Right. You know, Although these cards are selected, right? I didn't choose any cards yeah. that were unplayable, but also right, I'm right. choosing all of the social cards whether I think they're playable or not. So it's right. not like I'm avoiding cards that are bad but still in our wheelhouse. So I think exactly. looking at this set, uh, White got a lot of uh, okay to great cards that are it got enough for us. It got enough eyebrow raises, and and I'm 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 good with that as a starting okay. point. Uh, and then we go to blue, and oh yeah, blue. Blue got some stuff. Um, we're not going to talk about nearly as many cards, but we're going to talk. Um, access denied. Three blue blue for an instant counter target spell. Create X one one colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying where X is that spell's mana value. This is Thopter drain, and that's great. Like that's just that's just dumb, and I like it. Yeah, there <laughs> are there are a few different counter spells that's. Uh cost a ton of mana and have enormous upside when you successfully counter something uh, mm -hmm. this is one of those right holding up five yeah. mana not ideal hopefully you would be playing this in a deck that has a lot of things to do so that when you're holding up all your mana and you don't get a good chance to use this that you have something else to spend the mana on but when you do get the chance to hit a nice fat spell with this of course that's going to feel amazing mike because you're going to make all those flyers it's 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 a neat thing you know it's not overly powerful no not at all but it's cool. <laughs> I I would love to counter somebody's villainous wealth oh and make thopters off of it. You know, or like even the idea of just a it's a five mana counter spell and it makes me four thopters. It that's not great value. That's not great efficiency. But if you're holding it for the upside that it's something bigger and you're mm -hmm. an artifact deck where you care about that kind of stuff. That's a decent card. This is a playable card. It's interesting. Does weird stuff. I like it. Interesting. Um, then we move on to something that uh, you're going to talk about because I'll throw up midway through the uh, conversation about it. Yeah. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you move on to the next card here? I really like this one, Mike. I like it a lot more than the white one. This is another March Cycle card, March of Swirling Mist, X and Blue. Oh, we're looking at two completely different cards. <laughs> well, I'm looking at this one. March of Swirling I'll Mist is it. X and Blue for an instant. As an additional cost to cast a spell, you may exile any number of blue cards from your hand, and the spell costs two mana less to cast for each card exiled this way. The effect says up to X target creatures phase out. Lovely. Right. What does that mean? While they're phased out, they're treated as though they don't exist. Each one phases in before its controller untaps during their next untap step. Phasing is a very unique mechanic because the permanent doesn't change zones. No LTBs, no ETBs. Nope. It's just treated like it doesn't exist. And unlike white that cares about mana value, this cares about number of permanents. So you can use yep. this to really host someone even after they've attacked, have their... uh creature that's attacking phase out have their blocker phase out have their commander phase out and now their strategy doesn't work having a card phase out is super good they just don't have access to it until their next untap step it's pretty sweet it's pretty sweet and you can also use this to protect uh, your own board oh yeah no the uh, again when we talk about versatility we're we're hitting it real hard here and again the being able to do this Pay a blue, discard a card, two creatures phase out. Yeah, that's great. That is great. I, I, I'd, I'd play that. Let alone something where I can, you know, get rid of a bunch of cards or I can tap a bunch to phase out a lot yeah, of I'm targets. To do that. No, March of Swirling Mist is. Really I think good. I know what card you were you were expecting me to do, and I do that <sighs> one now. Yeah, I think you were expecting me to talk about Jin Gitaxius Progress Tyrant, the newest iteration of Jin Gitaxius. For five blue blue, seven mana for a legendary creature Phyrexian Praetor. Uh, it's a five five with two abilities. Whenever you cast an artifact instant or sorcery spell, copy that spell. 
You may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once each turn. And as a reminder, a copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. But you don't create a token when that happens. It also has the ability whenever an opponent casts an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, counter that spell. This ability triggers only once each turn. Right. This is super good. I think this is definitely approaching, if not at the power level of OG Jingataxius, uh, which would have you draw seven cards on your end step, and at each opponent's end step, that player discards their hand. That is really devastating. This is still pretty devastating, right? Because you are getting a ton of free counter spells and a ton of free spells for you. That value adds up rapidly, and I think this card demands removal, Mike. The fact that it is in the same conversation as the OG Jin, It definitely is. is. Which is widely considered one of the saltiest yes. cards. Yes, it is. Is a problem. And you said the key factor here. It demands removal. Well, good luck, because you better have two instances of it in your hand. Yup, that's the crux Unless of it. Unless it's like, on a You creature. hit the nail on the head on that one. This is nasty, because you know what? Oh, okay, great. I get to keep my cards. I just don't get to use much of it right. without watching it go by the wayside. And by the way, if they're able to play anything out quickly... This sucks. <laughs> yeah, well, here's what's going to happen, <laughs> happen, right, is your opponents are going to have oh to agree gosh. to work together. One of the non-active players is going to have to pitch an instant, and then the active player is going to have to do a board wipe. So that's now right. – they're two for wanting themselves and also wiping the board just to get rid of one creature, and yep. they're right to do it, Mike, because this creature's scary as hell. Yeah, because here, if it sticks around, this is busted. Yeah, if this sticks around, it, it, then they're in, you're in trouble. Yeah, no. I mean, we talk about how Yarok is good because it doubles ETBs. Yeah. This is just cat. This is just copying spells. Like, if you get to keep this around, you get to copy spells. I wouldn't want to see this way, in the commands. I'm going to tell you that right now. I wouldn't want to see this at all. Um, man, it's it's a problem. I I kind of respect the fact that they said, "Hey, Jinga Tax is a really really salty card." Not a lot of people want to see it played unless we're talking about like the meanest of mean uh as far as just like ah this is what my deck does right and they're like cool uh we're making another one that's totally different but it's still the still same super level of bad angry yeah. much salt much salt. let's uh but, you know. briefly talk about this artwork by chase stone uh, if you look mm -hmm. carefully at the artwork mike i think you will notice something that's very unsettling and that is that jin gataxius appears to be wearing clothes we're we're not we're not gonna talk about the unsettling. Who made those clothes, eyes. Mike? Okay. Is he wearing jeans? Does that make him Jean Gitaxius? Uh, I don't have a response for okay, that. Okay. Well, um, I, I I'm 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 fixated on the uncomfortable of the card, not a, not of that. That that was a good joke. I should have reacted <laughs> better. Um, move moving on because that's that's how I do things. Uh, Carrie. Kyrie. The swirling sky, Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie. Ky there's Kyrie? A, there's two eyes Kyrie? in there. Well, I, I listen. I'm I'm not a phonetics expert. Uh, the swirling sky, four generic blue blue for a legendary creature, dragon spirit, six six flying, and ward three. Ward three is good. Mm -hmm. um, when the swirling sky dies, choose one. Return any number of target non-land permanents with total value uh, mana value six or less to their owner's hands, or Mill six cards, then return up to two instant and or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. That's very good. I, I like that. This is much more of a rattlesnake for me. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's that's just good. Uh, as far as the dragon spirits, uh, this is the leader. You're going to you're going to get a, so a mini psych rift if you wipe the board. Right. I mean, that's, and if you try to good. target this, your host, right? Because it is worth three. That means it's effectively hexproof unless they pay an additional three to target it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, a flying 6-6 six, six ward three, that's not nothing. With a death rattle. Yeah. That's, it's, it's, it's pretty solid. We're, we're, again, we're not. It's not very high power compared to the original. No. But. But. I like it. Yeah. Interesting. Um. 
Yeah, I think we're good on that. I think we're good on that. Okay. Pretty interesting dragon. Cool. Um, why don't we move on to the Myojin here? Talk to me about the yeah. Cryptic Myojin Dreams. of Cryptic Dreams, five and triple blue. That's eight mana for a legendary creature spirit. Three, three Myojin of Cryptic Dreams ETBs with an indestructible counter on it. If you cast it from your hand, you know that part. Here's the effect mm -hmm. to remove an indestructible counter from Myojin of Cryptic Dreams. Copy target permanent spell you control three times. Oofa doofa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that can pretty much end the game on the spot, depending on what you're copying. Yep. And that means instead of one of that thing, you'll have four of that thing. Now, yep. Mike, I think there are some cards in the game that once you have uh, a certain number of copies of something, you just win the game. <laughs> they're, they're, that, they're those exist. <laughs> yep. But even if you're it's, not using those. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry about the downside of oh, this isn't an instant win the game because you don't have multiple copies. Of oh no, thing. I only it's, copied it, the most powerful thing in my deck three times. Right, yeah. like, what is the worst? What is the worst spell you could cast with this, and it would still be worth it to you? Okay, let's think about this. Because this, because this is where all right. Let's I'm... let's talk about the low end. Let's talk about like a yeah. mana dork. What if you got four mana dorks off this? Is that not good right. enough, or is that good enough? I I don't think it's good enough. Okay, but I don't think that's bad if that's the worst. How you know about I mean? how about like if, four if... creatures like uh, how about four solemn simulacrums? Right, you get the oh, four absolutely. solemn simulacrums. They all die. Absolute. You get four cards. Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah. I would, I, I, I'd be so happy with that. Four, because okay, for for perspective, I was saying if I did four Kadama's reaches. Well, you can't do that. Kadama's reach is not a permanent spell. I know, but you know what I mean. Like it, it was one of those like if I just got some ramp out of it, right? Eh. What if you got four but times man, the ramp? Four solemns. Yeah. Holy cow! Four ramp and four cards. That's, and that's the low end. I think that would be the low that's end. That's low end. Yeah. Man, if, 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 four blight if steals. the worst case scenario is four. Yeah. All right. One for well, each now, of you. Now we're, yeah. Hey, one for each of you. And this one's for me, but he's, but we're cool. We talked about it. We're, uh, that's, that's the other thing about this, right? Is that, um, this has another effect, Mike, and it's not written on the card, but it's sort of a, a knock on effect, right? Copy target permanent spell you control three times. What if that spell got countered? It doesn't matter. You've copied it, it three matter. times. You've copied so it you three can times. threaten and say, listen, you can counter that spell, but if you do, I'm going to copy it three times, and then they're not even going to counter it, I don't think. And right. if they do, it doesn't matter. You copy it three times. Mike, this yeah. is a huge rattlesnake. It's 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 terrifying. But here's the thing it's I guess it's a rattlesnake, but it's a rattlesnake in that it's preventing somebody else from doing anything to try and stop you from do stuff. So it does. Work. That's still a rattlesnake. Yeah, it's 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 a very defensive rattlesnake. <laughs> All right, we have one more blue card to talk about today. Yes, we do. Uh, the last card I want to talk about today is Tamio's Compliation. Uh, that's the Phyrexian Compliation with the EA in it. It's three and a blue for an enchantment aura with flash. Enchant artifact, creature, or planeswalker. When Tamio's Compliation enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Permanent. If it's an equipment, unattach it. And Enchanted Permanent loses all abilities and doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Not next untap step, any untap step. So it's going to remain tapped. If it isn't tapped, you're going to tap it and it stays tapped. If it's an equipment, it's becoming unattached and stays tapped. And it's losing all of its ability. So if it's an equipment, it can't be uh, equipped to anything else. So, yes, this it's is nuts. on the more expensive side for this effect. However, flash speed, it's a common, so it's going to cost like one cent. Yeah. And it can hit artifact creature or planeswalker. Um, planeswalkers losing all abilities basically makes them worthless, Mike, because a planeswalker with no abilities is just a target. It's just a permanent. Yeah. <laughs> it's a permanent that can be attacked yep and for only four mana um yeah i mean it is a common so it is going to be a little bit more over costed than you would want it to be but mm. i mean the other side of that is that this is never going to cost more than a few cents i mean 
I mean, a four mana, that thing doesn't get to be right. It doesn't untap. Anymore. It has no abilities. It's very good. Yeah. Holy cow. Not bad. It's really good. Not bad at all. No, this is this is again. I, I'm glad it's four mana. If it was if it was less, I would be uncomfortable with this okay. thing. <laughs> Do you want to take a, a break card. and then we'll talk about uh, black and red and green? My goodness, my. We'll we move so on to, to the rest about. of the color pie. We got a lot. Uh, there's there's a lot going on with. I'm this excited. Stuff, a lot going on with this episode. So we're gonna take a quick break and we will be right back. All right, we're back. Let's talk about black. Talk to me about Assassin's Inc. Yeah, this is an interesting one, Mike. Uh, two black black for an instant. Uh, destroy target creature or planeswalker, and the spell costs one less to cast if you control an artifact, and one less to cast if you control an enchantment. If you control Ooh. both an artifact and an enchantment, it's destroy target creature or planeswalker for black black, which is very attractive for instant speed. Yeah, I dig this. It's, I mean, it, like like you were talking about before, it is more on it is more likely you will have an artifact than not in just about every pretty game. much just because mana rocks like it, it's part of the format right. right and enchantments okay kind of depends but you know if this is a three mana half the time destroy target creature or planeswalker right that's very good yeah it's an uncommon so it's a cost it a bit higher but it's more accessible and uh i mean not every card has to be the other spell destroy all planeswalkers um or uh a three mana black board wipe where you just pay life and, and wipe the board uh, right. So it's just, it's okay. It's low, medium power, and uh, and it's spot removal. That's what we like to see. Let's talk about uh, Invoke Despair. One in quad yeah. black, five mana for sorcery. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two life and you draw a card. Then repeat this process for an enchantment and a planeswalker. Um, yeah, I think this is... It's and, better than the other invoke so far. Yeah, it is. So they will either sacrifice a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker, uh, or they will uh, lose six Not life and you'll draw three things. cards or anything right. in between. Yeah. It, it, I, I like Invoke Despair just because at worst, it's a... They uh, lose six and you draw three. It loses six, yeah. you draw three. That's pretty solid. Not bad. It's not It's, it's not, not great. great. But if you are dealing with one problematic thing, that can absolutely be worth it. Right. Yeah, the cycle's definitely now, on the lower power side, but uh, still still playable, I think. So here's my question. It, so it's target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two life and you draw. Yeah. Then repeat, then repeat this process. Is it the same opponent every time, no matter what? Yeah, that's a good question. Um yeah, I, since it only says target once, I, I believe this okay. is only going to hit a single player. Okay, because again, I think I think that would make sense. Yeah, uh, it's hey, you're you're invoking to spread right. on one person. This is not my okay. final answer. the The rules have not come out for it yet, and it, they could say in the rulings, "Oh, actually, you're going to choose a target each time." And if right. that's the case, then I think it becomes a little bit better. Right. I I I like it. it it's it's a it's a. The floor is high. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. not the craziest upside ever, but it's still going to do something for you pretty much every time you cast it. I'm okay with that. Uh, why don't you talk to me about our, our next dragon? Yeah, here. Junji, the Midnight Sky, three black black. For a legendary creature, dragon spirit, flying, and menace. Uh, when Junji, the Midnight Sky, dies, choose one. And he's a 5-5. Five, five. Uh, each opponent discards two cards and loses two life. That's uh, they're not going to like that part. Uh, second option: put target non-dragon creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. You lose two life. Um, that's good. Yeah, that's that's some blatant theory. <laughs> you're out of the graveyard. Uh, this is definitely a rattlesnake on both ends, right? Nobody wants to discard oh two cards because for most people that's going to be a third or even more proportion of their hand. That's pretty devastating. But what could be even worse is now everybody has to consider what's in their graveyard and be worrying about what you could steal from them. No, it's it's nuts. And the first time that I read this card, I, I read from your graveyard. Yeah, so, it's any any player's graveyard. That's really good. Yeah. And losing two life, that that's, being yeah. the downside, yeah. is is not a downside. 
that's well that's also you get that additional upside of each opponent loses two life which many decks don't care about how much life they lost just that they did lose life exactly no this is this is pretty good i like junji uh so far a leader in the clubhouse dragon wise um then we go to malicious malfunction uh one black black for a sorcery this is an uncommon Holy cow. Uh, all creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. If a creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Yee. It doesn't say if a creature would die this turn this way. You're right. It doesn't. It's just if a creature would die this so turn. So this, this is like an upgrade where you cast this and then cast another board wipe. And now that board yeah. wipe has been upgraded into exile. Right. That's an like, excellent point, Mike. It, it, like it, worst case scenario, if you turn this into, if, if would you pay three mana to do this and then toxic deluge for for another three mana four, and just yeah for another three mana and just, and just like, devastate no, everyone? Oh my gone. god! Yeah, combining this with another cheap board wipe is the play. Like I and that's why I was I was like, wow, this is an uncommon. This is pretty reasonably casted, and it gets yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. And the minus two, minus two isn't nothing either. That's going to hose your tokens. That's going to hose your utility creatures, your mana dorks. Obviously, it won't get the big boys, but it will weaken them to the point where maybe they don't want to block you this turn for combat. Who knows? Yeah, I I am. I, I, I like it. It's an interesting uh, it's, one. It's, it's, it is an interesting one. I'm, I'm glad it's sorcery, <laughs> um, but it's good. What's the big one? Split second. Yeah, this is an interesting one, Mike. Uh, what if you were to combine this with something like Sudden Spoiling, which is one yeah, black yeah, black yeah. for an instant with split second, which says that as long as this spells on the stack, players can't cast spells and can't activate abilities until end of turn. Creatures target player controls lose all abilities and have base power and toughness zero two. Well, Mike, if they have base power and toughness zero two, and this spell basically can't be countered, and then you cast... Uh, malicious malfunction they all get minus two minus two and get exiled they that's a six mana combo that's pretty much going to exile their entire creature part of the board Mm -hmm. well even even if you just decided that you were going to swing into somebody yeah and oh well i'm going to lose some creatures but if they block with anything and then they keep that damage and then i'll cast this and their stuff gets exiled anything that you're I right exactly you could cast team. you could cast the uh the malicious malfunction do combat they you know they take the blocks their their creatures don't die and then sudden spoiling they become zero twos the damage is still marked sure. you're right and now they're all dead and exiled see it like there's so many ways that you can yeah you can that's an interesting this. one-two punch that's good. yeah i like it uh, why don't you talk to me about our next card? Okay, here? next card in the March cycle, March of Wretched Sorrow. That's X and black for an instant. As an additional cost to cast a spell, you may exile any number of black cards from your hand, blah, blah, blah. You know the, the drill there. Uh, March of Wretched Sorrow deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, and you gain X life. You know, this one is uh, probably the weakest one out of all of them. Sure. But uh, I think that this... This has potential as one of those cards that is a rattlesnake by you revealing it, right? Because if they know you have this, then they know that you have the potential to hit anything on their board for one mana. Mm -hmm. Which, they don't know how many black cards you have in your hand. It could be all of them. Right. Now, this is definitely the weakest one that we've seen so far. I I, I think think we're, we're... We're in the position here where we're trying to talk up a card that is... Right. That's okay. fair. This I, this card is in the wheelhouse. I don't think it's playable. No, I I, I agree. It's it's part of a cycle, so we're going to talk about the entire cycle. Yep. It's my least favorite of them, but all right. You know, it, 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 I'm sure in a spot gap... Like, the the fact that you can do the damage to the Planeswalker is, is the only thing that's giving me a lot of... Okay, great. Because... There's a lot of things that, oh, I can do damage to a creature, but I can't target a planeswalker. Right. Okay, fine. This can do both. Cool, I guess. But well, let's talk about the uh, the other card in the cycle, right? Let's talk about the Myojin of Grim yeah! Betrayal, 5 triple black. That's 8 mana for a legendary creature spirit, 5-2. You know the indestructible drill, and when you remove the indestructible counter, you get put onto the battlefield under your control all creature cards in all graveyards that were put there from anywhere this turn. So good! Yeah, Mike, so that's board wipes, 
mill discard yeah. holy yeah. moly if you like everyone wheels guess what all the creatures they wield are yours yeah. uh, oh my god mike this one is super powerful plus it's 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 protected against its own board wipes. You board wipe, destroy all creatures. Uh-huh. Great. This thing is still around. Now it's now we're moving the indestructible counter, and now I get it stuff. all back. Ah, yep. This is no, dangerous. I like this, one a lot. this one is good. I, I, and you, you can always what, threaten with this one, right? This is the one you threaten against the board wipe. Say, listen, if you board wipe, I'm just going to gain control of all that stuff. Right. I, my my favorite thing about this is that it's a five two and it dies to malicious malfunction. <laughs> it's a little weak. Talk to me about it, this it, one, Mike. Talk to me about Soul Transfer. Uh, soul Transfer is a one black black, so three mana sorcery. Choose one. If you control an artifact and an enchantment spell as you cast this spell, you may choose both. Exile target creature or planeswalker. Return target creature pl- or planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. Not bad. That's just good. If you can get uh, both it, of those modes, I think this is very playable. Oh, yeah. Regrowth and, and exile a creature or planeswalker? Right. Now, oh, is this playable just... if you can't reliably get both modes? <sighs> and if it is, which mode do you like to choose? I feel like there's so many cards. I think I would black. like to choose the exile. Yeah, I was going to say, there's so many cards in black that give you the ability to put stuff back in your hand right. from your Right, but there are very few that let you exile spot exile. Mobile. Yeah. Now, it yeah. is sorcery speed. The, and and that's fine. Right. That's fine with me. Uh, you know, it because I think the reason you play this is if you are playing a decent amount of artifacts and enchantments. Right. right? You want to get both. So if that's the case, yeah. yeah. That's what you're aiming for, and you're okay with the idea of how it would sequence otherwise. Um, no, Soul Transfer is a pretty good card. I, I, it's not a gangbusters card, but it is good. Yeah, it's playable. Um why don't you talk to me oh about my gosh. our last saga here? I our, our, our last our, our last black yeah. card. I saw this saga. card and and I just got excited. Tribute to Hirobi, uh, uh-huh. which is one in a black for a saga, an enchantment saga, and this is another transforming double face card. Uh, the first and second chapters both say the same thing. Each opponent creates a one one black rat rogue creature token and you know that i love each opponent creates those are three of my favorite words in magic mike let's go over (laughs) to the backside of chapter three exile the saga of return it transformed on the battlefield under your control echo of death's whale of course this is referencing Hirobi of death's whale it's a black enchantment creature spirit with flying and haste it's a three three when echo of death's whale enters the battlefield gain control of all rat tokens this is interesting And whenever Echo of Death's Whale attacks, you may sacrifice another creature if you do draw a card. That's also playable as well. Um, Gain control of all rat tokens. That sounds narrow, right? It sounds like you're only going to get the rat tokens that your opponents just created, which is probably three times two, which is six. That's not nothing, right? Gaining control of six rat tokens is not nothing, especially if you're in a rat's deck. However, there are cards in this game that are changelings. And yeah. are also tokens. I believe uh, Crib Swap makes a changing token. Uh, mm-hmm. Birthing Bows makes changeling tokens. All of those changing tokens are rats. Yeah. No, it's 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 a cool card. And just even even if the if you can make the saga stick around, just the idea of oh I'm gonna flying haste three three attack sacrifice creatures to draw cards. Well, there's plenty of decks that love to sacrifice creatures for a bunch of reasons. Yeah. So. I, I, I like that this is this is in our wheelhouse because, yes, we're going to give everybody tokens. Huzzah! And the lowest floor that it's ever going to reach is that. Okay, that's pretty fun for us. Everybody have some stuff. This there seems nice for my Sekouar deck, right? Because in my Sekouar deck, I love having creatures to sacrifice, like a lot of aristocrats' mm-hmm. decks, giving my opponents creatures, and then if they don't use them, I'll gain control of them. And when I do gain control of them and I attack, I can sacrifice those creatures or another one of my creatures to gain value. And that's what my deck just likes to do. That's pretty slick. I, I, I like I like this as a two mana. It's two saga. mana. That's pretty slick. And solid. this isn't one of those ones where it's like, oh no, they destroyed it before it could hit step three. I don't care. I just gave my opponents a bunch of rat tokens. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty slick. Um, let's move on to red here. Okay. Because black didn't have nearly as many cards as we did in, in white, but it did do some interesting well, stuff. Well, it had more than blue. It had more than blue. Um, red, 
there, Even there's fewer. not a lot here, and uh, we're uh, foreshadowing. Uh, it, it's going to keep dwindling down. But a little bit. Let's start with Collision of Realms. Yeah. Uh, six and a red for a sorcery. Yeah. Each player shuffles all creatures they own into their library. Each player who shuffled a non-token creature into their library this way reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card, then puts that card onto the battlefield and the rest onto the bottom of their library in a random order. Mike. So this is a board wipe polymorph? Chaos for polymorph. Mike, does this go in Vivictus? Is this strong enough? Is this on theme? First of all, it will never go in Vivictus because it's a sorcery, and Vivictus has to be all permanents. It, 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 it's Fair a, enough. It's all permanents deck. I can't do it. If it was an enchantment, you know, say it was, uh-huh. I still wouldn't do this it. This is pretty expensive. Because, However, this is worth yeah. noting, right? Because this is a board wipe, right? Let's talk about how many different board wipes in red don't send the things that you wipe to the graveyard. To my mind, sure. There's only one, and that is Decree of Annihilation. That yeah. is even more expensive than this, and it exiles pretty much everything, which is great, so, Yeah, but you don't always want to do that. So this is one of only a small handful, maybe as few as two board wipes in red mm-hmm. that do not send the destroyed things to the graveyard. And in fact, this can be stronger than a lot of different board wipes because uh, board wipe goes to... The graveyard, they can reanimate it. If it mm-hmm. dies, they can put it back in the command zone. If it bounces it, they can replay it. If it goes into their library, they might never find it again. See, and that's why when you when you were bringing up like, hey, does this go in Vibictus? I went the exact opposite. Really? This is, my, this is in my spells, like my spell slinger deck. Nice. This is in my deck where I'm like, oh, I have three creatures that are in this deck. And that's it. And whether I'm just playing control, whether it's a, yeah. a, like a, a, you know, just a whole bunch of sorceries and instant right. matter deck, that's where I want. If this you can to get count you. the number of creatures in your deck on one hand and they're all bangers, yes. this card's great yes. for you. This is where it's yeah, at. yeah, and that's kind of where because seven mana for a get all the creatures back into their decks, and then everybody is going to reveal. Everybody who did that reveals until they get a creature. I have to win that transaction for me to ever want to play this card, which means I'm probably going to put it in a place where I've only got right. players. We kind of need to talk about this, and I may regret bringing this up, Mike, because what if, mm-hmm, what if this is hitting tokens? There is no effect break in this card. This is all one continuous effect. Each player shuffles all creatures they own into their library. Each player who shuffled a non-token creature into their library this way reveals cards. Yeah. So if a token changes zones, it ceases to exist. But that's a state-based action, Mike. State-based actions aren't checked during the resolution of a spell. So it's a damn good thing that this card says reveals cards from the top of their library yeah, because yeah, tokens they, aren't cards. So if right. I were a judge running a tournament and this card was being played and they were resolving it and called a judge, I would say uh, you're going to shuffle all your creatures into your deck, but we're just going to pretend like you shuffled your tokens in because that's never going to be relevant. Right. That's uh, that's slick. And, and you know, non-token creature is, is off the reveal. Yeah, I, I I was wondering why they had to phrase it the way that they did, yeah. but that does make sense. Um, okay, so seven mana. Uh, it's up there. Red is starting seven mana. Red is starting really strong. Let's let's pump it up even more. Uh, talk to me about explosive singularity. Hey, boy. Kaboom. Explosive singularity eight red red. That's ten mana for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may tap any number of untapped creatures you control. The spell costs one less to cast for each creature tap this way. Mike, that is Convoke. I would recognize that anywhere. Obviously, Convoke is not keyworded in this set, but if it were, it would say Convoke. Explosive Singularity deals 10 damage to any targets. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that in a token deck, it's not unplayable. That's about all I can oh, say I like about it. that. You like it? I like you it like in a it? token deck. Okay. In a token deck, I like okay. it. I, I, I wouldn't say it's a it's a be all. Now any target all, is nice because it can hit a creature, a planeswalker, or an opponent. 
Right. I, I think in a goblin deck, you can you can could probably make, make an sure. argument for it. I would never yeah. want to hard cast this. I'll tell you that. No, it's it's fine. You know, two red for at two red and tap out your uh, a bunch of creatures. Right. Deal ten damage to something. All right. It's not it's not amazing, but it's not bad, I guess. It's a um, mythic though. Why is it a mythic? Yeah. Well, I guess it's just the idea of ten damage to any target is is scary. Uh, <sighs> I don't know. Um, I, I listen. We can talk about this one, or we can talk about want. equipment dog. Equipment, equipment dog. dog! <laughs> I'm so excited. Kamainu battle episode. armor, two and a red artifact creature. Equipment dog, Mike. Yay! It's an equipment dog. It's an equipment menace. dog. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has menace whenever Kamainu battle armor or equipped creature deals combat damage to a player. Goad each creature each. that player controls. Reconfigure four, so and it's a two-two. Mike, talk to me about the equipment dog. I love this card so much. I love it so much. It's a, it's a it's a suit of armor that's shaped like a dog, and you can put a if dog this, in it. If this was not equipment, if this was just a three mana two two with menace, that whenever it dealt damage to a, a combat damage to a player, go to all creatures that. But it still controls, does have that. It would still, if it was just that, it would be really really interesting to me. I would find a way to play it in a bunch of decks. The fact that it is an equipment and I can put it into my equipment decks and I can do fun things with it is exciting. I will buy three of these because I know the decks it's going into already. And that's not even counting yeah. the fact that it's and an And we need to talk about dog. this, right? Because this is a card that has to uh, go through and deal damage to a player yes. to get the trigger. The trigger is amazing goad all creatures we know what goad means that means that on that player's uh next combat on each of their next combats uh all of those goaded creatures must attack if they can and they must attack a player other than you if they can right so yeah. to facilitate that we have menace menace is a keyword that says this creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures it's i i love this card and and I know it's fully tempered in the fact that it is an equipment dog. Of course. But if it was an equipment, I don't know, if it was an equipment troll, I'd still like it a lot. But man, it's really good. It's a really good card. I'm happy. It's an this. equipment good dog. Job. Good job, wizards. I approve. Um, let's move on to our last red card here and uh, the next Miosian. Uh, Myojin of Roaring Blades, five red, 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 so eight mana for a seven, four legendary creature spirit. Enters the battlefield with an indestructible counter on it. If you cast it from your hand, we're repeating ourselves. Remove an indestructible counter from Myojin of Roaring Blades. It deals seven damage to uh, each of up to three targets. Yeah. Seven damage each can be. Myojin of Infinite Range, this ain't. Yeah. And, and again, it's eh. Like, I don't know. I, is it? I think this is my least favorite ability of the ones we've talked about so far. Right. It's fine. Um, now, a seven four indestructible. That this can is damage this is interesting, speed. right? Because yeah. seven damage to each of up to three targets doesn't sound very impactful. Here's what does sound impactful: uh, dealing seven damage to each of your opponents, and now you just dealt twenty one damage to your opponents. Yeah, and the fact that you can swing in with this thing and deal another it, seven. It, yeah, yeah, you know it's it, it's it's not bad by any means, and it it's is just not exciting. Out, yeah, it's it's fine. I I'm not super excited to hard cast this to do twenty one damage to three. Not stars, particularly you know, no. Twenty. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's fine, it's but I'm not thrilled. Uh, but that's okay because, uh, like I said, I got excited for the Myogens because Atraxa weird counters and Atraxa isn't red, so it's fine. It's uh, fine. Atraxa is green though, and uh, let's move on to green, yeah. which is going to be our shortest section so far. Very brief. <laughs> Cur the Boundless uh, Skies, three blue blue yeah. for a legendary creature, Dragon Spirit, four four with flying and death touch. That's a dangerous combination of keywords. When Cur the Boundless Sky dies, choose one. First option, search your library for up to three land cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. Uh, I don't know about that one. Uh, create an... Alex, are you kidding me? Create an XX 
green spear creature token where X is the number of lands you control. Yes, Mike, you can get your three combo lands, but then you still have to play them out. I can get a glacial chasm when this thing dies. I can I can get my thespians. I love the idea of four four five mana whatever dies two or three lands. I'm surprised by how tame this is for a green card that costs five mana, Mike. That, that's fair. That's fair. Usually, <laughs> that's a like green card that costs five mana bonkers. and is a mythic would say something like two or three lands to the battlefield. Battlefield, yeah. Now, I'm not no, saying I is, want that to be the case, because that would be I don't busted, either. but I'm still. I'm very happy with this being the way that it is. Okay. Um, I, 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 I don't, don't get it twisted. I think this card is decent. Decent. I think it's good. Best. Uh, I, like, I mean, do you I'm, want to I'm talk not, about like, the second mode? Or is it not even worth talking about? No, because here's the thing. I, Unless you're doing something where you're doubling tokens, like, I, great, I'm going to, when this dies, I'll make a 7, 7, 8, right. 8, 12, 12. It doesn't I matter. I mean, that's you're relevant for a, big. for a populate deck, right? Because populate decks sure. care about a token being big. Yes. And that's fair. Um, or or creating, you know, you got your doubling season out. You got your parallelized. You're creating multiple of that token, right. et cetera. That's fine. Um, if I'm making big tokens, I'm... I need to make a lot of them. And this being on a death trigger, that means that I'm trying to make it work around a... Uh, you know, I, th there's just enough stuff going on where I'm not super excited about the second thing. Getting three lands into your hand mm -hmm. when something dies, that's a pretty good... That's a pretty good LTB as well. I would have liked to have seen... Or death trigger. Create a star star green spare creature token uh, with the... CDA, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this creature has power and toughness each equal to the number equal. of lands you control because then yeah. it could grow as the game went on. But as it stands, yeah. it can't. Yeah, if because here's the thing. If you get this out on turn four or five... Then it's going to be wimpy, might, wimpy, and you're going to take yeah, the lands. Right. right. And that's fine. It, you, if you have something that has two different abilities on death, right. for it to be a good card, in my opinion, you're going to want to be able... You're going to want to say, ooh, which of these awesome things do I get to do? Whereas Kura is very much a, uh, which of these, uh, the first one, the almost always the first one. Pretty much almost um, always. Yeah. But uh, let's move on to our last Myojin here. Uh, Myojin of Towering Might. Five green, green, green for an 8-8 eight, eight legendary creature spirit. Myojin of Towering Might enters the battlefield with an indestructible counter on it. If you cast it from your hand, of course, remove an indestructible counter from Myojin of Towering Might. Distribute eight plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control. They gain trample until end of turn. Um, so this is okay. interesting, right? Because I'm imagining yeah. this. I'm imagining that this is either your commander or you have a track as your commander. And you're either doubling the number of indestructible counters or you're casting this from your hand uh, getting the counter and then removing it and then putting those 811 counters on itself. I guess. But I this just... isn't superb. No, I see. And I was actually thinking that this is something that you're swinging. Like, this is just a, as far as I'm concerned, this is just a big combat trick. Right. Because right? it's, I'm swinging with multiple creatures. I'm waiting to figure out what yeah. your blocks are. The thing, and then I'm going to do the mean thing after that. The thing that we need to keep in mind here, right? Like, why are all of these effects that put plus one, plus one counters on our creatures so weak? There's a reason for that, right? In this set, we have the modified mechanic, right? So plus yes. one, plus one counters aren't just plus one, plus one counters. They also confer the modified status, which makes synergy with other cards. Now, yeah. your deck probably doesn't have a bunch of modified spells in it, so that's why they seem so weak. Yeah. It's it's not bad. Um I I still think I probably like it more than the Roaring Blades doing seven damage to three targets. Yeah. Just because I it is unlikely that I am going to kill somebody with the Roaring Blades. I might, but it's unlikely. I might be able to kill somebody with Myojin of Towering Might by swinging in or, you know, seeing their blocks, etc., and then manipulating things around to be able to kill them. 
it, it, but it's not that it's not that far away from each other. Like they're both fine, I guess. They're still like Towering Might is going to go in there because yay. Uh, but it's okay. I like the other ones better, is what I will say. Other than Roaring Blades, which is we're going to. What's just, uh, what does see. come to mind is another commander. Yeah. Uh, Voril of the Whole Clade. That's where I'm saying yeah. this. One green blue for a legendary creature, human merfolk. It's a 1 4 with the activated ability to pay green blue tap. Double the number of each kind of counter on target artifact creature or land. Now, not only does that uh, work well, almost like proliferate with, with uh, getting these Very additional indestructible counters. counters to do this again, but it's also doubling those A plus 1 plus 1 counters to 16. So I think that in Vorel decks, this could be quite playable, actually. Oh, sure. Sure. I, it's, like I said, it's it's not an unplayable card by any means. It's just, I'm not as excited for it. Yeah, me neither. If it gave it Trample, just like it, it, they get plus one, plus one, and Trample, cool. The end of turn, eh. All right. So that's, maybe, maybe that's, that's the end of our monocolor cards. And now we have yeah. a few uh, multicolored cards and a couple of lands. So let's start with the mm -hmm. multicolors, Mike. Sure. Let's start with another uh, Transforming Devil Fist card. Hidetsugu consumes all. Uh, yeah. One black red for an enchantment saga. First chapter, destroy each non-land permanent with mana value one or less. Uh, that's going to hose a lot of mana rocks, mana dorks, um, utility Token artifacts, decks. utility creatures. Yep. It's That's not nothing. Um, and no, that'll happen that's, immediately. That's... That's pretty good for a three mana. Yeah, that's not bad, but it keeps going. On the next turn, you'll exile all graveyards. Not bad at all. Very not good. Not bad at all for that. And the third chapter, it's going to transform Vessel of the All Consuming. It's a Rakdos enchantment creature, Ogre Shaman. 3 3 with Trample. Whenever Vessel of the All Consuming deals damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Whenever Vessel of the All Consuming deals damage to a player, damage. If it is dealt, 10 or more damage to that player this turn, they lose the game. There are yep. definitely some shenanigans here, Mike. This is not one of these sagas that transforms and turns into a nothing. This is something right here. People are afraid of this, even if it doesn't threaten them at all. This demands yeah. removal. This is this is a cool card design. I like this. All in all, I, I, I like this it's, a lot. It's because... versatile, it's powerful, it's mean. When, when, what is the worst stage of this card? You play, the worst you stage? Destroy, yeah, you destroy all non-land permanents with mana value one or less. Two, exile all graveyards. Three, turn it into this scary creature that has the ability to make somebody lose the game. Right, I think the weakest part is chapter three, when it gets exiled and flips. Now it's a yeah. creature with summoning sickness. And it can't right. do anything yet. That's when it's at its weakest. Then the turn after that, it becomes deadly again. Like, that's the worst case scenario. Right. The worst case scenario is that the thing, the saga gets to its end point, and it's still a cool card. Right. There's so many that's of these sagas slick. that once they flip over, I'm so done with them, I'm asleep. Not this one. This one is very good. Yeah. I like I like this. Um, let's move on to Kaima, the Fractured I like this. I, I knew you would, and I frankly, I do too, man. Uh, two red-green for legendary creature spirit, 3-3. Three, three. At the beginning of your end step, go to each creature your opponent's control that's enchanted by an aura you control. What? Put a plus one, plus one counter on Kaima, the Fractured Calm, for each creature goaded this way. This is so janky, Mike. This is It's so weird! Why is it a mythic? This is the jankiest thing ever. So you have to be playing a kind of deck that curses and enchants your opponent's creatures but not the kind of deck that tries to lock them down and makes them unusable because those creatures need to attack your opponents mike this sounds yeah. like a challenging build so it, it definitely is because the one the cards that i thought about with this are, are what are the auras that i would want to play the vows well the vows and the uh the impetus cards the oh i'm gonna give this thing plus two, plus two, and it's goaded. I'm going to give, this, like, you, you're you giving those benefits, but that doesn't help because it's already goading something. Right, I'm like, thinking of the vows because the vows give a bunch of stuff and yeah. they give an additional thing, right? So goad 
has a minor downside. And that is that if there's any kind of restriction on the remaining players that aren't you, for example, if they have propaganda, if they have any kind of effect that requires any kind of hurdle to attack them at all, then that go to creature is coming at you. Right. So those vows will help prevent that because they prevent the creature from attacking you and they pump it up so the attack is more impactful. This is just so weird. I don't think it's powerful. I think it's janky and I like it. Yeah, I I want to make this deck, but I know that it would take me like three times as long as it would take for me to make it. And this deck would deck. probably almost never win. <laughs> no, I mean, here, but it would do neat it stuff. It would. It would be very silly. Because... Man, That's the other I, thing. I you, your was... opponents need to have creatures, so this deck would have to be able to give them those creatures. It's relying on a couple of different things, and I... It's it's intriguing. When... Yeah, this is the kind of the, deck that I'm... That I, I'm not saying I'm going to build it, but I'm saying no, that th- when I read cards I like can't. this, I get excited. I, I The amount of things that have to go right for this to work. <laughs> you have to have your commander out. You have to have abilities out. Or you have to have auras, permanent, uh, auras out to enchant all of these creatures that you're hoping to goad. And you're pumping this thing up when you're doing it. And it needs to stick. There's too many ands that have to seek yeah. for this to work yeah. the way that it needs to. But it is cool. What if, uh, what if you had something like, something like a, a big creature with an assault suit, and then you threw an aura on it, and you passed it around the table, and now it's not just something that it's like, oh, well, here's upside if you attack with it. Now it's like, okay, you have to attack with this. Also, it's going to just smack the crap out of people. And and far be it from me to ever be the person that's like, ah, assault suits. I don't good. like assault suit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to be that guy ever. But that's what we're talking. This about. is like we're bottom tier jank. Like, I like it. Yeah. yeah. It, oh, it's. I would love to play this deck. I don't know that I want to build it, <laughs> but I would love to play. Okay. It. You know what I mean? Let's talk about another thing that's intriguing to me. Uh, I Django Uprising, not Django Unchained. Yes. I Django Uprising. That's the exact opposite of Django Unchained. Um, that's X red white for a sorcery create mm-hmm. two uh excuse me create x two two white samurai creature tokens with vigilance they gain menace and haste until end of turn and each opponent creates x minus one two two white samurai creature tokens with vigilance that's a very weird way to to phrase that so let's just say it like this the amount of mana you pay for x you're going to get that many tokens uh, they're two choos and they get menace and haste. Everyone else will get that many less one. And they will only have vigilance. They won't have menace or haste. This is a really curious one, right? Because if you want this to work well, it needs to have a huge mana investment. But whatever you're planning on doing with them needs to not uh, be interfered with by your opponents having that many creatures. So it can't be combat based. But it's in Boros, which is almost always combat-based. So is this like an Aristocrats card where you just make a bunch of tokens and sack them all? Oh, um, I was thinking that this was going to be something like in a Crescendo of War kind of I love Crescendo of War. Yeah. That, see, that's where I was at. I was like, you know what? But, I Mike, they have all these almost, blockers. Right. But I'm thinking this is almost like a Pillow 40 kind of thing where I'm going to create all these things. The the haste is totally whatever. But they have menace. Yeah, they have menace. But so they gain menace and haste until end through. of turn. They don't keep the menace. Right. But you're you're making the vigilance. You've got menace. You've got haste. You're attacking. Even though you're making blockers for everybody else, they're only going to be half as efficient with blocking. So if you have any anthems that are pumping up your creatures, right. if you're doing anything where attacking, cre- et cetera, I think this is a finisher in the right kind of deck mm-hmm. and in the wrong kind of deck it's it's what i like because it, you said it earlier yes everybody makes stuff my stuff's just going to be better right i'm down for that for me this seems like a less attractive tempt with vengeance okay i really really like tempt with vengeance and this to me is sitting in the same spot mm-hmm. um but I think that this isn't because this doesn't require your opponents to cooperate with you, whereas Temper right. Vengeance does. Yeah, this is 
it, it's in the same vein. Uh, I like this though. I, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Nice, I wish that it I did. Like it. it had something more, not more powerful, but something that made this more political, right? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe if it said each opponent creates X minus one, two, two white stamina creature tokens with vigilance and those tokens are goaded. Maybe. If if you if you make that, then this is a finisher. <laughs> right. Right. If you can um, find a way to goad those creatures, this is gonna be really nice. Sure. I almost like the idea of like uh, uh each opponent or pick pick an opponent for each one they make a two two uh, so you get vigilance, menace, and haste, right? Yeah. If you could do ones where it's like, okay, I'm going to get vigilance, menace, haste. This opponent is going to get ones that have menace. This opponent is going to get ones right. that have vigilance. And then you wouldn't have haste for somebody, obviously, because it wouldn't work. But, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you did something like that, cool. Yeah. But we can, oh, we can if hard. all day, but it doesn't have it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's neat ish. Uh, Hinata. This commander. Dawn crowned. Yeah. Um. Oofa. Uh, so this is one blue, red, white for a 4-4 four, four flying trample. So flample. Uh, Kieran Spirit. Spells you cost... Spells you cast cost one less to cast for each target. Spells your opponent's cast cost one more to cast for each target. This seems nuts. This is giving me uh, Grand Arbiter Augustine the Fourth vibes. It, it just seems nuts. Yeah, Jess, Jess all, guy is just getting some interesting commanders in the past few years, Mike. But, okay, so 4-4 four, four Flying Trample is, is not nothing by itself. 4 right? for Flample. 4 for Flample. Spells you cast cost one less to cast for each target. Yeah. That's really, that's, I mean, this that's is, pretty solid. I feel like Feather but, kind of has to be in this deck. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I feel like Feather is the actual secret commander. Yeah, Feather's the real commander, and this is the make Feather go hard piece. But but just the idea of having to ta just the tax on every spell, any targeted spell, yeah. your opponents cast yeah. throws things off. How much worse is Path to Exile now that it's two mana? Much worse. You know, and that's that's I, that, and you're dealing with that on everything. Yeah, I. Talk to me about this card because yeah, I, this is I'm, interesting. I think that you're you're definitely wanting uh, to build this deck around cards that target and and take benefit from that, especially cards that target multiple different things. Sure. Um, well, heck, that March of Swirling Mist earlier, yeah. where it's just up to X, X target creatures phase out. Great, yeah. that is now blue. Phase out anything. You're right. Because it's you pay one it, for each it's target. It's going to cost one for each. Yeah, target, so you, and it's going to cost one less for each target. It just so you can phase out literally any number of creatures. That's that's remarkably strong. That's like I mean that's big. That's pretty powerful, yeah. right? And that's definitely I mean, not the oh only card in Jeskai that could can, take good advantage of this. No, but put that on put March of Swirling Mist on an Isochron Scepter. Just great. I'm going to phase out everything. The end. Like, that is, this is a weird, so you know how Kaima, the Fractured Calm, we talk about it and we're like, hey, this is a janky thing and it would be fun, but man, it's weird. I feel like Hanada is the exact opposite, where it's, you can go so many directions with this and it'll be good to great, but I don't want to build it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, I'm going to have to to be the Debbie Downer for you here, right? Because March of Swirling Mist would not work if you imprinted it onto Isochron Scepter. Because okay. Isochron Scepter is going to allow you to cast that spell without paying its mana cost. And when you do that, X is always zero, no matter what. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Cool. However, okay. I do like that idea of casting March of Swirling Mist in this deck because you're right. It's always going to cost a single blue. That's, oh my gosh. It's nuts. Um, okay. Let, let's move on here uh, to our last our last multicolored uh -huh. card. And I don't know if this is the, like, card of the set based off, like, uh, not as far as, like, oh, it's the best thing. I don't, but it's cool. Like, uh, okay, anyway, the Kami War. One and Wooberg. White, blue, black, red, green. 
So six mana for an enchantment saga. Uh, first thing that happens when it comes in is exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls. That's it. Just exile. Gone. Next lore counter, return up to one other target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, then each opponent discards a card. Okay. That. Fair. Cool. Then you exile the saga, return to the battlefield transform under your control, uh, turns into Okagachi, made manifest, 6-6 six, six for an enchantment creature, dragon spirit. Uh, Okagachi, made manifest, is all colors, flying, trample, flample. Whenever Okagachi made manifest attacks, defending player chooses a non-land card in your graveyard. Return that card to your hand. Okagachi made manifest gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the mana value of that card. So that's a lot. There's this this yeah. card has a lot of text it does. on all of its collections. So let's go over that again. You're paying six mana, yeah. one in Wooburg, and immediately you you'll get spot removal, thing. exile something. And then on the next turn you'll be able to bounce something and then each opponent discards a card. Eh. Now we're, we're on two turns and six mana for this. So if you want it to go farther yeah. than that, you need to take three turns and six mana. And then if you do yeah. that, you'll exile it. And then you're going to have a six, six flantler just sitting there, unable to attack. Then you wait until the fourth turn and yeah. now it does something. Mike, I hate to say it, I don't think it's this is worth good. six mana because it, no. it's it's going to take four turns to get that payoff. And if it doesn't get to the final payoff, is this even worth playing? Why why is the one generic in there? Um, I don't know. I don't for know. standard. I, I don't know if there's. I don't. I I don't know. Is it just to make it to where you can't reduce the cost by Wooberg? Like I don't. No. I don't understand because here's the thing: the creature itself. If it was, if that was the creature for mana. six mana, and that was just it on the front face, uh, curious, not powerful, but interesting idea. However, the fact yeah. that it's the back face and it takes four turns to start working, mm, I don't know. I see. I, I disagree. I like the creature a lot. A six six flying trample that gets stronger and. I didn't say I didn't like it. To, I said I, yeah, I said like, I did like it. Oh, I'm saying I'm saying if it was a six six for six flying triple right. and it that's awesome yeah. yeah sorry i misunderstood uh we're, we're i'm saying that as it as it stands where together. it takes four turns yeah. after you pay the six mana to get that yeah that's when it's not really good enough because that's four turns for anyone to say wow i don't want that to flip um whereas with some of these other sagas getting the first or second uh chapter that can be enough obviously it, it's ideal if it goes to the back but Honestly, I don't know if it's better or if it's worse when you uh, make something cost so much, and then all of that pressure is spent on uh, waiting out those three, those four turns to it's, to get to that card. And what if it doesn't get there? It's absolutely worse because here's here's the direct way to compare it. Kami War six mana exile a thing, return a th uh, thing to its owner's hand. Di everybody discards a card, make a cool creature, right? Hidetsugu Consumes All <laughs> is better than this. It is, and it costs in, half as in much. almost every... It costs half yeah. as much. It can go in more And depth. it costs three fewer colors. And I like, like, I like each stage of it more. I still, like, even as cool as Okagachi is, I think I can do more fun stuff with the Vessel of the All-Consuming than I can do with Okagachi. It's, I'm not saying it's a better creature, but it can do more cool stuff with it. So, I don't know. It just, it seems kind of, eh. It does. That, like, the Wooberg saga that flips into a creature that this set is doing, this new thing. Yeah. And the big... This is like the mythic, face saga. Oh, it's mythic. You're right. It's six mana. This should be, fine. like, devastating on the backside. This should be, should if, be really if cool. this gets to the back side, the game is pretty much over. That's how strong it should be. I'm just, it's, it's, and that's, that's kind of what bums me out. Right. It's fine. You know? All right. I, don't, uh, I just well, don't think it's that, for Commander. Those are, really. No, those, those are all our spells. Let's talk about a couple of the lands. Here yes. Because the, they the are channeling lands. Yeah. Mike, these the lands are so, so good. Let's start yeah. with 
Odawara Soaring City, tell me. Tell me about this card. Okay, so Legendary Land. Tap, add blue. Cool. No, doesn't come in tapped. All that good Great. stuff. Great. Um, it also has channel for three blue, so four mana. Discard Ota- Odawara uh, Soaring City. Return target artifact, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker to its owner's hand. This ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control. So... This can just turn into a discard, pay a blue, bounce something. Right. Well, let's talk about That's the like- raid for that, right? Because we have we have a raid for that on a non-modal card. That's one. On Cyclonic Rift, which is widely considered to be one of the best spells in the game, it's a modal card and it costs two. This is on a land. This is a land yeah. that you can discard out of your hand for what is effectively an uncounterable bounce that no one yeah. can see coming. Yep. And it can cost and, as little as blue. And normally, I would expect the sequencing with lands, where if it's, hey, tap to add a color, or do this cool ability, right? And right. I understand this cool ability is from your hand. I would expect that to be a land that has to come in tapped. Almost certainly. And this and this and all of them, yeah. they don't. The downside uh, for these lands is that they're untyped. That's the only downside. Right. But you know what? I absolutely hold on to a, uh, a, a, a uh, sorry, just a non-basic blue that could also be a bounce. That's great. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. I like that a lot. Let's, all right. So that's um, pretty okay. Let's move from pretty yeah. okay to yeah. new paradigm, new staple, the best land <laughs> I've seen in a year. But Seiju who endures. This is like the basically the art for the entire set. We've got Boseju towering mm-hmm. over the city, artwork by Chris uh, Chris Ostrowski. Excellent artwork here. The tree is it's like 200 meters tall. It almost looks like a building with a tree on top of it. It's awesome. Let's talk about Boseju. Legendary land, tap add green, channel. One and a green, discard Boseju who endures. Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land that opponent controls. That player may search their library for a land card with a basic land type, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. This ability costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control. I'm speechless, Mike. This is good. so powerful. Oh it's my good. god. It's- this this ninety percent of the time, as far as I'm concerned, is discard, pay a green. Does this just go into thing, every green plus game. deck ever? Is there any deck that doesn't want this card? I I think this just replaces a forest every single time. Yeah, I, it's just it's, this it's is so good. good. There's there's not a time when I'm upset. Because you can play it for green. I'm set to do this. Always. You can always get a normal untyped forest out of it. It doesn't come into play tapped. Or out of your hand for as much as two, but as little as a single green mana spot removal, artifact enchantment or non-basic land, and then you ramp them, or don't ramp them if it's a non-basic that you hit. Mike, this card is... I I don't have enough to say about it. No, it's... I love it. it's, It's very good. It's very good. The only thing I will say about it is that uh, everybody knows how good it is because it's already at the thirty-five, forty. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part is that um, people saw this and they immediately knew yeah. this card is busted. Yeah. Oh, we've already got a land. Or right. we, we, we've got it, and we already need to get it reprinted. Somehow. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Right. So <laughs> really let's compare the green one and the blue one. And there is a whole cycle, but mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about all sure. of them. The blue one costs as much as three in a blue. And it'll bounce something, an artifact, a creature, or an enchantment. And it can cost less, but it costs as much as four. Or a planeswalker. Boseju costs two. Mike, why does it cost two? You know the answer. Tell me why. I don't know why it costs two. Is it just because it's trying to do the naturalized disenchant kind of thing? It costs two because it ramps that player. But yeah, I want to ramp them. <laughs> right, it costs it costs one because Let's it ramps real. that player. I want to ramp that player. That, for me, is upside. I want to spot remove them and then give them a land. I want to remove their most powerful, their guy's cradle, and give them a land. I want to remove their artifact, their enchantment. I, 
I mean, this wins the set. This is the best card in the You're, set. I I want to disagree with you, but I can't. You can. Like, it, you can you can say whatever it, you want. No, I'm saying yeah. I can't. Like, it, it, as far as just objectively, as far as what... Save the do, best for last. There's, there's some cards... There are definitely cards that I like more. But as far as what's better, there's nothing that's objectively better than that. I think I have like so. three or four decks with green in them, and I'm pretty sure that... It, I'm either buying four of these or proxying four of these. I'm not sure which. Buy one and proxy. <laughs> the fact of the or matter is, my packs and packs. This is the best. This card's downside is that it's not typed as a forest, and that's not enough yeah, of a downside for me not, not to put it in every single one of my green decks. Yeah. No, it's the one thing I will say is. Oh, okay. Here, earlier we were talking about uh, Kura. This is definitely a land that I would put into my hand because then I will let people know, hey, this is now in my Good hand. Good point. That's, don't yeah, now it's a rattlesnake. Like, hey, hmm, yeah. I don't ever actually need to play this because it's just a normal land. And if I don't play it, now I'm yeah. holding up a spot removal spell that costs me almost nothing. Mm -hmm. It's it's good. Um, I'll tell you what, we've been going on for a bit here. Yeah. That's our last card for the yeah. set. Give me... Give me just your overall. I mean, we don't have to go over what your favorite right, card is. Right, because know. we know. It's Basidio. Yeah. Right. Give me your overall just kind of feel on this set. You you picked these cards. Yeah. Which means you went through them all. I did see them How all. do you feel about the set overall? I think the set is... It's interesting, right? Because in many ways, this set is more powerful than the Kamigawa block. But in many ways, it's also matching that power. I think that uh, when we talked about our Kamigawa set review, the block review, um, one of the reasons why people didn't really uh, mesh with this set, it didn't really work for them, is because the power level was relatively low for the environment at the time, which was not Commander. It was standard in other uh, competitive formats. And I think that we're kind of seeing that, again, a lot of these cards uh, are on the lower end for power level and that's okay that is okay i think what yeah. you're right i think that we are spoiled i think i'm spoiled by getting a lot of excellent <laughs> commander cards but i think i'm even more spoiled by getting a lot of excellent political cards because this set does have a lot of cards that can do that but very few of them are legitimately and genuinely exciting cards there's a lot of them but none of them are not a lot of them are making me stand up out of my chair. I, I'm i glad that we got to go through it. But, mm -hmm. I mean, comparing these new Myojin to the old Myojin, I think the old ones stand out a lot more. I think the old ones have more power. I think they're more mm -hmm. threatening on the board. I think people are more sure. afraid of them. Um, the dragons, same deal. When those old dragons yeah. are on the board, people are afraid of those things, Mike. Nobody wants to get hit yeah. by... Uh, You'll say the morning star and skip their untapped step. That's the scariest thing in the world. Nobody wants any of that mess. And yeah, so those cycles, I think, aren't quite as exciting. However, we did get uh, some nice options for channeling. We got some good new board wipes. So I think there's some good and some bad. I would say this set is right about average, maybe a little bit above average because we got so many of these cards, but it loses some points for for being very low power, especially on the rare and mythic cards tend to be low power, mm -hmm. which is interesting. And and almost the opposite, right? We saw so many uncommons that are punching way above their weight class, which is weird to me. I I almost feel like this set, what they decided was they were going to fill the niche for a lot of things that people were talking about. Okay. Like the there there is a commander in this set. That can be a saga's commander. Yes. Cool. That means that saga, and and we're bringing back. We sagas didn't talk about them. Though. Everybody, who, right. right? But you know what I mean. Like I feel like what they did with this is they said, "Hey, we're gonna do stuff where what's the problem with equipment? Well, you can either have equipment or you can have creatures, but there's a weird balance. Cool. Let's make equipment creatures now. You're right. There's, that is a problem. There's with enough the equipment decks. I feel like they did. They tried their hardest to like try and soften some of the problems the hard edges yeah they just they tried they tried to soften some of the hard edges and in that way i think they did a good job right there are some cards in here 
some that we talked about, some that we didn't, that are playable sometimes, but an absolute banger in some decks yeah. that would absolutely be useless everywhere else. Right. And I kind of like that. As far as the overall power level, I'm absolutely up there with you. I, I'm right there yeah. with you. It's 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 a decent set. I don't think the power level overall is quite busted. low. But yeah, exactly. There's like, don't get me wrong. Farewell is a very yeah, very good. I'm not card. talking about all that cards go, categorically because you're yeah. right. Farewell is one of the most powerful high mana board wipes we've gotten in ages. Right. Yeah, there's there's definitely stuff that is. It, it, it belongs, right? It, it's, it's oh, I got this card. It's absolutely sliding in and replacing this other version right. of what was the most. It's not like this card is just whiffing out of all of my decks. There are uh, yeah. I, definitely a handful of cards that are going into several of my decks. But I also wanted to see those cycles come back and be punching mm -hmm. at that same weight class, but in different ways. And I think that they went down right. a couple of weight classes. Well, I'll tell you what, Alex, um, if anybody wants to talk to you about some of the cards that you liked, some of the cards that you didn't, or ask us questions like, why didn't we talk about the rabbit battery or the literal Megazord, etc.? what are some ways that they could reach you? <laughs> well, we didn't talk about the rabbit battery and the Megazord because as cool as those cards are, they're not they within the scope review. of our set review. If you would like to go listen to a more complete set review, please go listen to either our good friends at the CMDR Central podcast or over Ooh. at the EDH Retcast, and they will review uh, pretty much all the cards from the set, give you a much wider picture. We just uh, we focus on our wheelhouse. And if you want to talk to me about those cards, let's uh, go over to Twitter. You can get me at Lapermedic, L-A-P-P-E-R-M-E-D-I-C. If you want to ask me a question in private, uh, you can email me at alex at edhrec.com. And if you want to look at any of these new cards and see what kind of nasty infinite combos they can do, you can go to my other website, which is commanderspellbook.com. Thank you for listening, everybody. If you enjoyed our conversation, please subscribe and rate the podcast. Uh, follow what all the different things. It kind of depends on what platform. Retweet, reblog. There's, there's, up, a, there's a billion. Updog. Uh, exactly. Updog. Downcat. Uh, if you want to buy any of the cards we like talked an equipment about, dog. And you should, ooh, an equipment You can dog. buy like five equipment um, dogs. That would, oh man, I really, we're going to have to check the prices on that. You're going to build a dog deck and just equip dog all of them. What are you talking about build a dog deck? You're going to slot. going to replay Ren and Sari again. It's you can be only put one equipment dog into your deck. Why would you hurt me this way? That's why you need multiple. If you want to buy it, <laughs> exactly. If you want to buy any of the cards we talked about, deck boxes, sleeves, etc., you can support us by going to bit.ly slash EDH underscore social. We're going to include a Discord link in our show notes. There you can come talk about all the cards with us. You can talk to us about cards that you think should be played more, but they're not on EDH rec and high numbers. Or why aren't people playing these in our, ooh, can I see that? If you have judge questions, we have judge Hi, Hello. Say hi, hi. That's him. That's I answer him. questions yeah. on Discord for fun. That's fun for me. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's true. I've seen it. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at edh underscore social. Email us at the social contract at gmail dot com. This is a lot of fun. The set the set is weird. It and is I weird. Think that's my favorite thing. Yeah. It's it's samurai, cyberpunk, right. Power Rangers, animal. It's cool. I and I would like I'm to say gonna enjoy it. I enjoy it too. Yeah. It is weird. And if you want to watch content about the mm -hmm. weirdness of Kamigawa, uh, the Magic Man Sam of Ristic Studies just came out with an excellent video essay about the creation and the aesthetics of Kamigawa and the reception. It's a great watch. Go on uh, Ristic Studies, search up Kamigawa. I think you'll like it. I love his videos. There you go. Well. It only took us about two hours and 20 minutes. Yeesh. We, we got just got so it. excited. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. And uh, hopefully that'll keep you tidied away. And everything will be fine until the next time we talk to you. We hope that's real soon.